Hello everyone, welcome, welcome to this to very special episode of the v Died Podcast. I'm your host for tonight, Philly J, and I'm here tonight with the crew, Reg, Atali, and Vicky. We got a very special episode tonight, do we? And, but first, I'd like to ask everyone, how's everyone doing tonight? Crikey, mate. Crikey what? <laughs> I need help and assistance. You have me locked in a room here. Uh, what is it? I'm blinking twice. Uh, I, hey, I told you to keep it down. It happens of your own volition. Right, exactly. That this is uh, this is the life right now. <laughs> we don't want people to know I that a, you're stuck in a room. I am a beast within a cage, and I need a beauty. Oh no! Same don't way. look at me. <laughs> oh, don't look, I look at you. Oh my gosh! No, no. no. <laughs> Philly, take this. Get this back on track. We're already on a train ride to heck. Yes, we are technically a train out to heck because we're spoiling a beautiful film tonight, as you can tell with the title. I, I technically, on purpose, put in Japanese because no one will understand unless they click on the link. And then, when the moment they oh, say, wow. we're going to spoil the movie, bell, and then they can click off. But I get my view count, so we're good. Anyway, <laughs> tonight, oh we, are, we are... Selfish as hell, you should feel bad. No, I should. You probably won't, but you should. Oh, you should, but... Uh, mm. the, the, 
But regardless, it's gonna it's gonna be a beautiful talk because like I really want to talk about it with my friends uh, that also love this film, and that includes Atali here uh, and the other two that caught up with us somehow, which I'm actually like happy and impressed because otherwise it would just be the two of Yay. us. It would just be me and Atali talking about it while we play uh, the Final Fantasy. But tonight we have the other. Oh no, I'm way ahead of you on that. Oh my gosh! <laughs> of course she is. But regardless, though, uh-huh. the moment that these two are involved, uh, finally saw it. Uh, surprisingly, uh, Hibiki too, because it's not out in theaters for his hand, but uh, but a Discord server was restreaming it. So it's great that he got nice. some content involved. Um, I'll be covering base a lot of it. Uh, I'll, I'll cover a lot of it as, as much as I can because I have seen it like six times. Uh, <laughs> so I got my coverage. Both versions of. Well, you know what? What? I went and matched your six times and I already have tickets for my seventh. What? Oh my god. So you should. Okay, well. That's I, a lot. I guess I'll watch it. <laughs> no, it's. Yeah. I guess no, I'll watch tomorrow. <laughs> And there's another showing at tomorrow as well. It's probably to this week. Is that is that's committed. It's already been over three weeks, so the chances of it going out are going to be a lot higher. A lot higher. On your region is. Well, it's the, it, that shows us that good of a film, and we can't help but like wanting to explain it in the in the episode. Because uh, honestly, like even even my phone is like condensed of uh, Bell and uh, the Beast himself. This cause is so good. There's something about the film that like just, dragon. Uh, oh yeah, dragon. That's his name. I call I call him Beast. Oh beast, dragon, whichever. It's even watching. Even tainted by the dub. We're gonna get into that later. Hey. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> uh, hey. Uh, so we're gonna. So for first, uh, I put a, I already put on an outline for the episode. So the first thing we're gonna talk about is the summary of it. Uh, for again, this is a spoilers. Uh, it's filled with spoilers, and this is the spoilers part for sure. We're gonna explain all the story within this part. So brace yourselves. You guys can fill mm-hmm. in whichever you like. So to recap, right? Um, story follows uh, this girl named Suzu, right? So, uh, it's a Japanese high schooler in Japan's Koshi Prefecture. It's a really nice location as well. Uh, that's a sh- well, technically, she's a junior high. Junior high? She's off on the southern island, well, basically. I'd, I'd say it's, it's high, still high school in, in, in every, in some, like in Canada, she's technically in high school, you know? <laughs> junior high, senior high, whichever word. Uh, but regardless, uh, as a child, like, she lost her mom in an accident. Um, so the, the first part of the film is her, like, wandering around, right? Uh, you expect you already expected her that she's this like beautiful, gorgeous character in a in a different world, but in the real world, she's just I guess a lost, simple girl. Uh, first few Aww. first few minutes in, uh, you explore her town, right? You go you hop onto the train, you hop onto the train. She goes to school through that. I guess it was like the first her first few days in the school because a lot of clubs has been advertising themselves, especially especially. I, yeah. Yep. I disagree. Hmm. I disagree on one thing. Like her commute is monstrous because she has to bus down to like the end she of the line and then get on a train she, and then go to school. She, exactly. She wakes up. That's don't forget day. crossing the bridge. bridge Got to cross that bridge. Yeah, it's yeah. it's. It, I, so well, in a way, when she gets to school, she's yeah. definitely been there because they know her. Yes. Like yeah. Well, she has yeah. an established community in mm-hmm. her high school. Therefore, she cannot be a transfer student. Yeah, which is crazy. Yeah, considering so. she lived out in the sticks, so. Yeah, it's crazy. Uh, let me try to move something here. Uh, um, and also because she got dragged into the uh, karaoke bar, like, mm-hmm. during the one uh, Peggy Sue thing at the beginning too. That, yeah, she is not. A oh, that was, that was cute. That was cute. It, it's it it speaks it speaks a lot when uh, when that happened because yeah, uh, that's technically her life where, uh, she, she doesn't know where she belongs. Uh, she she doesn't know where to, where she stands, and the fact that she explains her backstory kind of uh, explains a lot about her where she is right now. She had a beautiful she has a beautiful family. She had a beautiful mother that takes took care of her. Like, oh wow! Uh, do you know? Have you not seen the film? <laughs> I haven't seen the film. It just it's it, it, it just kind of hurts. Okay, you know? okay, okay. It's just like she had <laughs> like. <laughs> Thanks for the follow, by the way, Max. Thanks for the Thanks so much. Uh, you're awesome. Uh, Thank you. Uh, oh, oh, there is there. definitely a different thing. It is t- uh, seeing how like the difference between like watching six times, watching seven times, and then just once from the everyone else <laughs> this explains a lot. Once, wild is <laughs> wow. Okay, is and then the, and then there's this guy. Once, 
while distracted. This motherfucker. All right, cool. <laughs> Imagine not paying attention to a beautiful film like this guy. Right. I don't know why he's here. Anyway, well, I was paying attention. You're not. You have uh, anyway. sure. You ADHD. That shit. That's not a respectable movie <laughs> behavior. Yeah. Hey, it it, it kept Especially most of my attention. That's how good it was. Oh my god. All right. For the record. Alright, alright, we'll hold you on to that. Uh, as I explain a little further in the story. <laughs> so... Uh, it was after class, yeah. Yeah, Anyways. so it was after class, she, she was invited for karaoke. And then she had a moment. No, I meant we're gonna quiz Reg. <laughs> Alright, question. Alright, first question, Reg. Alright. <laughs> kidding, I'm kidding, I'm kidding. No, we're not gonna go through that. Are you kidding? I think you're not. Okay, so. I am flamboyantly beautiful. I answer yes. <sighs> oh Thank you for the question. We'll do it later. Do it later. <laughs> Cringe. What is this? Yes. Yes. Later. <laughs> As a child, she lost her mom in an accident that she still doesn't fully understand and has become distant from her well meaning dad. It's instead burying her grief in a instead burying her grief in uh in a cu curious invitation that her friend Hudo, by the way, she's kind of best girl to me. I don't know why. Uh <laughs> Oh Veronica? Yeah, yeah, he Hudo, yeah, he She's not my type though. Like like you know, Did you just call her yeah. Veronica? He no, I called her Heroka. No, that's he her actual name. Is, no, it's Hudo. Hero is too short. It's, oh Hudo is too short. Okay, fine, fine. Whichever mm -hmm. were. Um yeah. she but out of nowhere because Belle had her uh, sorry, Susan had her moment that I kinda like turned her up. And all out of the blue, she, uh, she got invited to from her friend Hiro about this thing called the U. Um, and I guess, the Isekai. <laughs> call, call, call it the essay. Call it a better SAO than uh, call it a better SAO anime at this point. But we're not comparing that it to this. Oh, wow. we're, we're, we're comparing to SAO because the only Oof. it's the only comparison it could make. I'm sorry. Um, so <laughs> here we go. Uh, thus, she created her own avatar through that beautiful world. Uh, uh, a pink-haired Belle. She called herself Belle because Susie means Belle. It's a beautiful uh, translation. In fact, uh, a little side note on that. Uh, she called herself Belle in Japanese, but a little, I like how like in English, in the English dub, they had to highlight Susie means Belle. So I'm like, okay, that's pretty meta. Um, I I find it funny in the particular line that you actually glossed over the fact that she is actually not a original character. She's not an OC. Because if you remember the part where she's taking the picture with uh, Ruka, mm -hmm. it used oh, three yeah. different girls and mixed them together well, and then put her freckles on top of it. Yeah. I, oh, wow. Yeah, I guess. Yeah, because I guess. Uh, I don't know why she used that photo. Too. We should use her like I school ID photo. Because it's probably the most recent thing they found on the phone. Oh, yeah, I was scary, just enjoying it because she looked like Megarina Luca, best Vocaloid. I mean, Me you're not wrong. Discuss in a different world. <laughs> 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 I didn't even think about that. I mean, technically, it does make sense because they say it try to resemble Luca, and Luca is like a, a pink hair Vocaloid. Yeah. And Belle on the her online persona has like a pink hair. Yeah, that's fair. It's kind of it's it's really nice to look at, but compared that to everyone else in the in the world, it like she like stands out hard. So, so thanks for the biometric. You, uh, thanks. <laughs> if you go into you, and the first thing you see is the fucking Chuck E. Cheese mouse. Oh my gosh! No, you know you're in a different world, and you're going to be completely standing out because you're a human, and most of the I people that are in you aren't human. She's what? I thought she stood out because she was riding a freaking whale. I mean, come on. No, well, no, that, that's no, like she's, mad she's props. Not, she's not I, that, like, if I, you were riding a I whale, think, I think that's like, the production whoa. team just coming up with that because because she stood it's out so hard. It's not even the whale. Cri it's the wind Cri fish cryptocurrency like, got nothing on these whales. She is <laughs> she is the coin. Yeah. She is literally riding the wind fish from Legend of Zelda: Link's Awakening. Hell Prove yeah. me wrong. <laughs> Yeah. Oh, he's really getting us back on point. Uh, <laughs> I mean, this was on point. This is this is kind of the conversation. So yeah, 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 we're good. We're good. Yeah, we're on track. We're on track. So, it, with that, she travels you on the back of a blue whale with a hundreds amps strapped to its back. Yes, this fish. Yeah, uh, isn't that? Oh gosh, I'm trying to like I'm trying to read through the summary here. Sorry, let me try to remember. <laughs> You're reading through a summary? I thought you were. Uh, 
uh, no. reciting this from memory. I'm like, no, kudos! I'm... Someone was paying attention to the movie. No, I'm trying my best, dude. <laughs> Many times as we've seen it, we better be paying attention. <laughs> no, I thought no because you, you know you know why uh, on a sixth time I, I brought different friends with me, and one person was not into it, and that kind of like what? yeah he did he then so so, so, so who's out. this it person's is, name uh, where do li- he live <laughs> uh, who who do we uh, butcher no we're not we're not doing that because it can, not even the same I'll, 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 I'll get I'll get the knives ready no so. no 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 at, oh, yonder, eh? because at that what I'm hungry right now right. oh god uh, so, we're hangry technically so so throughout this Pangy, Pangy. so recalling where we we're recalling where we're from. All right. Yeah, so we're past gains, the Snickers point. So she get she so basically when she get, got into the world, the first thing she did is sing, and she the moment she sang, it's like it resonates somehow resonates to the entire fucking world of you. It's like your avatar just types just types in all chat, but and somehow like does a does an audio voice a filter. I don't know. You know how you know I don't know if you guys would know that, but like if you sometimes type in chat at some games, it like it like makes a voice out of it. No? Okay. Well, oh, like um, text to speech? Text to speech, there you go. TTS. Yeah. Not like T I T S, just TTS. Wow. What did you what? have to Because there's the Twitch integrated throwing system. That's I'm just saying. Topic. A lot of people throw a lot of love. That's a different topic. Provide me offerings. That. That's a different topic when I go through that. So she resonates. I demand her, offerings. She, she resonates her beautiful voice to the, to the, void, to the void of you. Uh, the song is called Gail's a Song. That's technically her first song in the film. Uh, and then she just gained a lot of traction from that, from two followers to, uh, to a lot. Um, from yeah, that point, I like that scene. From more. that point on, you expect, like, oh, she's going to pop off. But no, it slowly came up to that. It started off with her feeling a lot better. The moment she started going into this world more, she just walks around in a better positive light. She's in a lighter mood yeah. you feel happy for her because you know you, f- from that one notion alone she can sing in this world like I feel great and you just feel happy for her and then next scene well, yeah. wasn't there a scene where she was just like with all that blood or, no, I wouldn't say blood later. but just like all the yak you were saying Atali? so you Bridge see yeah. in like at school yeah. that she's actually gone from being distant not caring about anything to actual like Enjoying life a little bit, just enjoying, and that's when bit, you know yeah. something on her has changed. That's and that's a beautiful part of that. Exactly, that's a beautiful part of that. But then, and then you get, but that that wasn't even the climax of it because the next thing you know, she was put into the, her, she was put into this position just because she has a beautiful voice. A lot of people just <clears throat> just start to follow her. Next thing you know, you get you get to this big like you get to this big like summary part of like what's going on and the world apparently just covers her song through different remixes and then a lot of people are just uh giving yeah. like, feedback on her in a negative connotation in a confusing connotation and in a positive connotation it's 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 something to be appalled of because it kind of reflects the real real life scenarios in that point because it's it's yeah. like, it's like the one uh, what, what do you call it? A one hit. It's like a one hit wonder thing that happens sometimes in the world of music. That, mm-hmm, that exactly. That, that, like it sounds. Everyone yeah. questions it, but it's like it has a deeper meaning that they feel and it resonates with them. So it's like that's why it's so talked about, right? And why it becomes a one hit wonder, even though it's like, oh man, this is just so typical, right? It's not the best, it's not the but best. she slowly grows into it, you know. Yeah. And I love how like you, if you think about it, is like a metaverse, like a mm. Twitterverse. It's mm. basically the internet, the version it. of the internet, and, but it's the virtual world. And it's, so. it is visually well done. Uh, as explain as um, Suzu later would try to run to Hiro, who's somehow an expert of the internet and is a genius herself. That's why I like her. Um, that explains like oh, how I, it's a bias. I, I'd say bias. <laughs> yeah, she's very, she's very Based. she's very blunt to be specific, in a way. She's very very blunt. Um, That's what, yeah, she's savage. Very very savage. She just like talks about how the how the internet goes. And she just explains what's going on. And at that point, you at that point you know that he uh, Suzu is somewhat covered in a way because she just she just has all that planned out. She had she had the arithmetics going on in her head to make things work. Yeah. And uh, she had the uh, she you know the tech geek friend that you know can take care of anything and everything. 
and anyone. The ones you need to value the most. <laughs> exactly. exactly. <laughs> or the oh, like someone here that doesn't exactly focus on one stuff at a time. Yeah, right. Damn. Yeah, Wait, what are we doing again? Uh, the, here we go. Who, who are we talking about again? Yeah, I, I don't remember. Who We're are we talking about Shuzu. Or Shuzu. Like, Shuzu. you know, Shuzu and Zeus. Not Shuzu. Uh, Shuzu. <laughs> Uh, well, we're not talking about Yuzu. maps, we're talking about the best friend here. What? The no. hero. Mm -hmm. right. So, so, so that kind of like, Childhood best friend. At, that, at, that, at that little moment, it, uh, the movie kind of introduced to her, uh, and how she, how, what her role is in, a, in the movie besides, you know, being a savage blood girl. Because the first part, he's first, the first time encounter her is during that uh, club, club meetup thing where, uh, she talks very savage about Ruka, and then t <laughs> makes fun of um, our boy, um, our, our paddle boy. I forgot his name now. Fuck me. <laughs> uh, paddle boy. We'll just call him Paddle Boy. No, 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 no. no. I got this uh, because I've seen the movie more than once. Um, I should. It is uh, Chikami Shinjiro. Ch oh, or Kami Shin. Kami Shin. Sorry. Yeah. I, I, fusion of his first and last name. Me tried to explain this movie already, and I'm already tired in the brain, so I'm trying to remember names except Suzu and Hiro. That's all I remember. And the Kami Shin is just the funnest extra I've ever seen in, in an anime film. <laughs> he is. So, he, he's like. He's, 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 he's the like. He's like. Boy. We'll explain tall later. and awkward. We'll talk you know? later. We'll talk later. We'll highlight that part later. Okay, you know what I'm talking. You know what I'm gonna talk about. You know what I'm talking about. So I'm gonna come back to this part we when will. we get into we get discussing Ruka. Yes, we will. Yes, we will. We, we will talk yeah. about both of them later. So as so back on track, we talk about Hiro uh, uh, explaining to um, Suzu about where she stands now, and basically just became her producer and. Um, and I, I, I nice. guess she, I guess she had made producers because she had a giant she had a giant like whale rider I don't know what you call it in Legend of Zelda but whale rider yeah she she had a giant whale two, and two other sound like sound booming whales to like echo throughout the world of you to produce her songs and that's when you know like the first intro song was technically her second and it's a beautiful song and like and, and a beautiful and a beautiful VTuber friend of ours has covered it as well God bless her Phoebe. Uh, so Yay. she covered it so beautifully. Uh, and that's that's when you know, like, uh, and that's when you know that Suzu has no. It, she it looks looking good for her, and I guess she had her covered, right? And she was gonna hold her first concert, and that's when she everything go, leads to her first concert. It's a beautiful concert starting off with uh, some performances, uh, with some water effects and like some crystals. Uh, Oh, you're talking about the Sphere Dome. Okay. The Sphere Dome, yeah, that was a. I mean, it wasn't her first concert, but it was her biggest to date at that point. Oh, okay, my bad, my bad. She had exploded to where she was being like brought around several like little minor things, but like that. Oh, but she's I see. being she's attracting multi millions worth of people to yeah. one concert. Yeah, glad, glad glad all that glad all the cash went to charity, huh? Oh, thank goodness. Um, I mean, yeah, that's how you avoid getting. Yeah. yeah, exactly. So, uh, yeah, to cover her, cover her, cover, I guess. So, with that in mind, that's when you thought, oh, I mean, it's a pretty good movie so far. Like, it's all about her at this point. And then, oh, what did you meet that for? What was that, Rich? <laughs> you said a comment. Oh, it was a link to uh, Phoebe's uh, U cover, so. I got it. Millennium Parade X Bell. I, so. I, I, got it, I got it later. I, and that was, yeah, that was. Hey, Zero Pi, welcome by. Hey, welcome, welcome. Hello. Um, and then, and then you, and then you get to this interesting part where somehow there was an interruption. I don't know how they let this go, but uh, I don't even know what he was thinking. But that's when your boy Dragon comes in, interrupting the concert. It was a chase sequence. It was a chase yeah. sequence. Like, he was being chased. He by... He was literally being run down by the cops, and he had nowhere else to go. Which is a which is an interesting part of the story where uh, the, the the movie introduced. You to this beast that he just looks like he just wants to be left alone, straight up. The first thing, first thing you notice from him is like, the first thing you notice from him is that he's just trying to run away from Twitch, Twitch mods, uh, Discord mods. I don't know who Twitch you ever call mods. it. Running <laughs> away from Twitch mods. Twi yeah, I'll call, wow. I'll call it Discord mods because they look like good Discord mods. Because um, 
Oh they, they put God. up they put up a stance for themselves. They introduced themselves as Justice Warriors, so the SJWs. Um, oh, the SJWs. Yeah, yeah. Oh, it, oh my gosh. They, they, I forgot the name. Right? It's like Justice Crew or something. <laughs> No, it's just the justices. The justices. The justices. Yeah, so, uh, um, <laughs> so cringe. Very, very close. Very close. Um, <laughs> so we got. So they introduced themselves. So, uh, I get the crowd introduced them, because, uh, which is great. We got. We got. It wasn't even that. It was uh, mm -hmm. Hiroka that did it because the crowd was too busy. Like the crowd was like some. The crowd somehow like explained it well. I guess that. I guess we're not gonna go into that, like, you know, crowd just kind of speaks over themselves, but no, like, I guess the the world of you kind of toned it down to, like, one important note, okay, send it to Bill, uh, here, uh, so this is Justice, this is, this is what they do, uh, apparently this is what the dragon is, uh, they explained all that, they, the crowd covered what's going on with, between the dragon and the Justices, and the next thing you know, your boy Justin comes in with, like, the big, the weirdest fucking cannon ever, <laughs> Uh, the, uh, the un and he calls it the unveil. I'll unveil you. It's and called the data drain from Dot Hack. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh. I There's no contesting. You think about yeah, what? Honestly, I thought the same. Oh, really? Oh god. I did, I haven't seen Dot Hack, but honestly, at first, like I was like thinking, I was thinking like, why this dude is trying to resemble a Mega Man? This is a very cringe Mega Man we have here. Uh, <laughs> so we have Mega. Oh, the most cringe was the sponsor logos that showed up, <laughs> like behind uh, him. The I will defeat you. Oh shows up the sponsor, sponsor logos you. with the power <laughs> unveil. Sponsored by Honey, uh, <laughs> YouTube, uh, all that, all the big names and whoever in the world that was. I'm just here, like blowing my mind. Like, what is what is wrong with this Discord mod, bro? Holy shit. I mean, when you have the power of money on your side, you have expectations <sighs> behind you. Yeah, like, at that, at that point, you're like, you're like, you're, you're, you're gone. You're gone at that point. Like, I, I'm just here looking at him like, what is, what's going on? <laughs> so, for con so for context, when someone is unveiled, they basically have their entire, I guess, yeah. persona mask ripped away. Yeah. And yeah. they're supposed to basically be deleted at that point to where they don't exist in you anymore. But uh, and keep in mind, they're not exactly the developer or the no, person who developed it. No, they're, they're no like so they were given this power by the five people that made the world for some weird ass reason that they yeah. wanted to trust a freaking superhero collective. Yeah, right. Which is like, it's just already a red, which is already a red flag IMO to like if you want to create a game like that and uh, create a world like that, you 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 want to set some grounds. Not just fu not just. Not from five people, but like I don't know, man. There's just there's so many like questions ways that you can just have a peaceful society, and they mention that like mm -hmm. okay, we were only brought here because the uh, the what do you call it? The voices just felt just no, oh, yeah. the voices, In the ones that created the world. The little interview they felt had, that right? there needed to be some sort of protection, yeah. but there really didn't really need to be. They just brought it upon themselves. They, 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 they technically did. Already makes the justices pretty sus. Yeah, very, very sus at that <laughs> point. Uh, I mean, it's already pretty sus the moment the, um, I, because I watched a f uh, watching that part again with a chase. It was already sus when like you know, like I understand where the where that comes from. Where like he has to be brought to justice, but like, uh, at at that point, it, maybe it's just me being biased about the beast, but. It, because already knowing the beast, he just wants to be left alone. I don't think he's done anything too bad, but beating up the Discord mods. Um, I'm just keep calling Discord mods. I'm sorry. Uh, <laughs> just I mean, so I guess they were like the people. So they go on to mention this a little bit later, but mm -hmm. he has fought in like duels. Three hundred and seventy-four people. Yeah, has won three hundred and sixty-nine times. Uh, uh, only lost, lost three, three times. I remember. Yeah. The, but the was there three. was someone that way later on in the film was like, I'm going to sue him for mental distress and stuff like that. I'm like, oh my god, here we go, here's a oh, Karen. Oh god, he's a um, Karen. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I fucking love that point. Uh, yeah, so... Uh, 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 you didn't even. Okay. I, would, I didn't even know that world had like a boxing arena, and I think that's fair to fight in that boxing arena. Uh, yet they're suing him for beating them up. Hello, 
<laughs> you brought it up to themselves. I mean, when you're when you're crossing over the ropes, you're technically like it's technically signing for, stuff away. At it's that technically point. for a game, right? It doesn't mean, and it, I guess it's being chased. He, the moment he beat one person up enough justices, he'd be like, "Oh, he's so bad, gonna chase after him." Ah! Kind of a deal. So, so it's kind of unfortunate. <laughs> I, I saw that. Yeah. I saw like a particular person. Now I'm sorry. Um, so, so wow. if we get to that. We get to that part, and then. The interaction between him and Bell for the first time was some was what made Bell question him. What he who are you, right? Because he didn't hurt. Well, him. obviously he, he crashed her concert. But I mean, does that but, automatically make him an asshole, though? Yeah, Reg. Considering his circumstances, <laughs> no, it doesn't. Technically, doesn't no, because he he didn't mean to. In, in fact, like him being shunned, like at that point, I guess he's used to it from how much he fought. That's is I, that that's kind of unjustified at that point. So I understood where he, uh, where his stance is, regardless. Um, so the, and just has he interacted with Bell from all the lights and stuff. He didn't even hit her at all. He just, like, sped past her. He could have just went around, but no. He decided to interact, I guess. Uh, it's I mean, he could have just plowed her right there because he had the momentum, to, and just could have easily, like, pretty much injured her, put her in the hospital or something. Like, and she just, like, he just, like, okay, I'm going to be right back. I'm going to grab a freaking pylon, and I'm going to go smash some people for you. Uh, for, for her. Yeah, uh, pretty cool. Well, one yeah. himself, but just to, like, get it over with. He just wants to get out of there. That's fine. Um, so he did that. He did all the shebang and uh, dodged uh, dodged Mega Man's little t tiny beam of. <laughs> that's not even worth it. It's not even worth <laughs> mentioning Mega because it, uh, he was just shooting like Mega Man beams. And I, I swear to God, that beam is hitting someone else and that unveiled them. I swear to God. <laughs> you know? I mean, it, you could see in the animation that it actually dissipated after a certain distance, so no one could hit anyone else. All right, well, good eye on that. I I I, uh, I I told you I, I paid attention to this movie. A I lot. I guess I guess <laughs> after like the third time, I just want to watch it for the music <laughs> and the, and the noise. And for the, yeah, I, you've already you've already kind of zoned out a little bit. I zoned up. I mean, while I'm I, still I, going, I kept watching because I just something about it that I wanted to watch over and over. That's all it is. So, so apologize for that. But thank you, Atoli, for paying a little more attention than me. I do feel bad, but a little. It's it's already Sorry, more than growing. that. Sorry, yeah, more it's than growing. That. It's growing. Okay, okay. 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 <laughs> All right. We'll talk about it another. Uh, we'll talk more about it later. Uh, but uh -huh. okay. So we that part's done, and at that point, Bell was super curious about him, and he went up to Hero and kind of ex explained the gist of it. Because at that point, Hero was like really annoyed that the concert was canceled because of because of him, and now and they made up. Uh, in uh, in the, in the one classroom, she did some like arithmetic. I don't know what that's about. How did that lead to that? Investigation? Uh, she was doing complex. This comes into play later, as the reason why she was doing all that. <laughs> yeah, I, I guess so. So we get to that, uh, and then s seeing how she's kind of grounded from you know using a room, she <laughs> <laughs> she got banned from her own like. It was, I guess it was her father's workstation or something like that. I guess so. Well, that's fine. That makes sense. It, it's If it's not her own PC, that didn't make sense. So, uh, we, she, they went to their old uh, elementary school where Suzu lives. I think that's where everyone lives, I think. Right? Do um, you think that's where, because all the childhood friends that she grew up, maybe not Hiro. Oh, actually, okay. Okay. So the location of this elementary school... Um, you notice when they have that little in-between station where the bus yeah, picks up and yeah. then the train goes? That's, that's near the it's school. It's somewhere on the bus side, so it would be somewhere, like, nearby from there, but it wouldn't be in the same direction yeah, where it was. So seeing the whole film, like, I would guess you have to walk along the river, and then you reach a school a few, uh, a few more minutes away from it. I would guess so, because they kept they kept walking in the river after picking her up in the end of the film. But that's beforehand. That uh, we want to jump into that yet. Um, so uh, back on track, um, she would they would she she brought everything that she has uh, technology wise in a giant ass box backpack that she has. Uh, compares herself to a Kami machine where he was heading out to a tournament. <laughs> it, yeah, he had an away. Uh, freaking like big ass boat or whatever. Yeah. 
It's like, don't lump me in with you. I, I will forever rem remember that line in the dub. It's like, don't lump me in with you with that box of yours, with the weird ass big little thing of yours. <laughs> oh no, it was more of like, don't lump me in that I'm doing stuff for sports like you are. Uh, I think that was the context of it. I guess, yeah. So we get, so they get to the school. Um, as uh, as Susan writes down the permission thing because you know you have to have permission that even in an, even in an empty building you have to have permission to use the build the classrooms, uh, one of the rooms. Fair. Which is fair, and that's fine. That's fine. They gotta keep track of that and and <laughs> unveils unveils a fucking like the same room the same technology room that she has in her home except it's like, well. <laughs> Yeah, I love the fact that she's like the mobile backpack. She, she, oh my gosh! Like, the, her, her her school Tech be, her school became the like Pentagon she of Japan. Her whole luggage with her. Yeah, her school became the Pentagon of Japan. That's, that's, that was funny. That's basically me. That's basically me. Bad, bad. Yeah, I don't. I, I think she has more RAM than you at that point. Anyway, uh, <laughs> I, I I would agree. I would agree. So we get to that point, uh, and then it's investigation time. Who is? Who is this? Who is the beast? Right? Who, who is the dragon? Who is the dragon? I shut up. Right. <laughs> dragon no, beast. No, no. <laughs> wow, I'm sorry. I'll, 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 I'll stop. Toxic. Uh, yeah, toxic. Drago spaghetti. You are. You are sh you okay, podcast so. is over now. You are. Okay. Mom spaghetti. <laughs> listen, listen, listen. You are shunning. You're already shunning me even before we started the podcast. Okay, let, let me hear my piece. I hear what? the dub more. I'm not doing any shunning. <laughs> no, 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 no. I'm talking about it all here. She, no, oh, she's okay. no, I'm not. Uh, I agree with you. Body me. Because I have the dub. I am not. Uh, okay, all right, all right. Okay, Daughter, don't don't body other people. Put, don't put, use your body. That aside, That's okay. not appropriate. All right, put that aside. Put that aside. <laughs> Bruh. Yeah. Put, put that aside. Who's a dragon? Who's it's okay, Dieter. All right. And that's when you introduce yourself to like the other to the other Mystery. characters in the world, which is what I liked about the film so far because. You you thought it was just gonna be, be between Suzu, her friends, and her family, right? No, the entire world mattered, and that's kind of like a that kind of leads to a great theme in this film with regards to like what the theme of the film is. With online online communicate online the community in the online world and like uh, how we interact in the online world. Like that's the theme we're going on. That's going on in this film, and I'm glad they kind of add added other characters in this in this film then that isn't even around them like it's technically around the world of you and now we're introduced to these like three i think it's three other like stories one one guy i guess he's from europe i would assume something about it, it started with him uh how he had tech quote unquote bruises in his body but technically real tattoos but um he tattooed his own body in the same area where his one of his loved ones um uh, passed away in a car accident and that's where the injuries are I don't know how he got that info but uh, he tattooed his body around that ha uh, the following up is another person rega uh, regarding like you know having a quote unquote a beautiful family um, but having a beautiful family kind of and showed up Instagram photos of herself like that but but I'm glad that Hero kind of pointed out that Hero pointed out something that that related so hard to the real world is that everything's fake. <laughs> it's so fucked. Uh, because she com she compared her it's uh hero compared the woman's Instagram's photos with like stock photos and it's like oh, nice. not even not yeah. even yeah. edited. It was not even edited and that's what's fucked up about the well it's not well, I guess it's a slip away. But it's still fucked up regardless because I don't think that was a slip away. I think that was like just she just neglected Thinking like people, oh, it's just stock photo, and people won't notice it if I just post it online because I'm just using it for clout. Yeah, that's what's. That's... Yeah, like no one would be willing to do the amount of research because it's all like mm. a plaster face, you know. So yeah, uh, it, that's when you know that the online world is uh, the any and most of most of anyone on the world online world will put up a plaster face of themselves anyway and yeah. she's one it's basically marketing example. so it's yes marketing and she's one big example uh and the fact that she kind of highlights herself as you know what if she's a monster all along just because she wants attention but and then we get to a really important one the baseball guy uh forgot his name already but the story <laughs> was he's He's a baseball player. Oh, that guy. But yeah. He, oh yeah. He hides his. He who hides, always 
he, um, he, he always, wears a jacket. He always yeah. wears a jacket above his stuff, and you always question why. Even in the summer days, it's like he wears a hoodie. Uh, all that super stuff. hot, very super hot. But it, it doesn't. It, nothing has come. Uh, so we got all those three ga ga gals face fo face front, like face facts about themselves, right? They and they still haven't figured out who the monster, who the who the dragon is. So, so kind of. So at that point, Bell, at that point, Susan's just overly curious about this one, and then um, one before she slept, uh, she watched some clips involving like. Um, other forms of other forms of media uh, through I don't know where she look I don't know what kind of platform it is but uh, it's like a talk show with like the dog and who was that I can't try to remember oh the egg right uh, so there was a show about the uh, about a little emu a little dog and an, a cracked egg and it kind of highlighted all the kids that talked about the beast as well I don't know if I recall that Atoli. oh yeah do you remember that Atoli? The little little talk show about like you know uh, the dog and the egg trying to talk about the beast themselves, and how kids were like, kind of giving the beast like good remarks. I, and you and you and that's when you really question like who is this guy? Why are the kids complimenting him yet the adults are like shitting on him? And that and that's when Suzu kind of, uh, so her curiosity overwhelmed herself and decided you know what, uh. She found out a bit, a little bit about um, the kids explaining about a castle, and that the beast uh, has resided in there. And that's when you thought, nice. Th and that's when she thought she's she should probably look that up. And um, Hero, uh, she explained to Hero, and uh, it, in the U world, uh, her their avatars float full around the map until they find this air abandoned segment of the world. I don't know. I guess this was a beta made world. <laughs> it was just simply abandoned. The building, while the buildings afloat, the buildings are empty. Um, so not much going on. It's just an empty space. A lot of a lot of crack stuff here and there. Um, but apparently, the beast castle is uh, hanging around there. You encounter some really interesting creatures. In fact, the first interesting creature you ever see in the first part of the film was a floating. A floating, a floating uh, aquatic ma aquatic creature. It's a, it's an aquatic creature because I think it's a real it's a real aquatic creature. Um, so you encounter that first, but as you try to look for the castle, uh, you encounter these like little NPCs uh, that um, be these real beautiful creatures of NPCs kind of float around and ask you, are you looking? Are you looking for? Are you lost? Are you looking for something? And they just give. And they try to lead you to it, but at the same time, on purpose, make you make you go lost. <laughs> it's kind of, uh, it, 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 and at that and at that point, it's just a play of like beautiful art. I think to me, it's just like it's just nice to look at, just because you know. I, I, sure, sure, uh, they're messing with Bell, but <laughs> it's just it's just nice to look at different scenery while you're looking for this castle. So there's that. Um, it took four. It took four of them to like get her lost, and now, and at and at the last part where she got actually lost from all the clouds, it's like, and that's when you find the same creature that you met in the very beginning. Uh, oh, when you met, uh, with the, the same aquatic creature you saw, it's telling you that don't trust these gals. Uh, I'll I'll just lead you to the castle. Follow me, <laughs> and you follow this path all the way to like this big giant ass castle that floats in the sky that's so majestic so nice and at that point at that point I realized are we watching the same film <laughs> or is this beauty a beast <laughs> and i'm like there's no way so i can so you will go to this castle she enters and you see the same little mother mother freaking creatures that are like oh no <laughs> They're like, oh no, what's she doing here? Oh no, oh no. At that point, you're like, oh great. But at least this little aquatic creature was like helping you uh, locate. But the first thing he introduced, uh, the first thing he led you to is in a room filled with, uh, what do they call it? I'm sorry. I'm, it's the roses. The roses, but they named it specifically. What was the name of it? 
They call it Secret Rose. Secret Rose. Okay, that's it. Yeah. So yeah, I'm trying to, sorry about that. Like that was so important, but I forgot the name. <laughs> that at that point, it's like it's very ironic. It's like it's like the Disney film, but a lot better. Um, so they, so she tried to pluck off this uh, one of the roses, and then you see the beast themselves. And at that point, oh, that was probably the best scene ever. That was the best scene because you, you he tries so hard to scare her away, and at. And see how cute Be Bella Doppel is super cute because she's trying to like, you know, she does get scared, but it's like, huh, no, I'm not leaving. <laughs> and just tries to follow, oh. tries to follow the, well, she, the, the she, muscle around. She worked so hard in trying to find the guy. She's not going to like give up after that. I mean, all that effort. Yeah. She's so trying to ask her who like, she you, She like. made an investment. She... <laughs> Committed. Uh, the the dragon is an investment. <laughs> oh god. Um, so she she follows him around to a certain point, but uh, as as he tried to damn best to scare her away, the moment that like broke me a bit was when the floating creature was like kind of like shook and like scared, and I'm like, what's going on? But he can't help but like trying to reach out for this aquatic creature, but the but the mods, uh, but the dragons are doing it. Bell follows them, as well. And as the and as the dragon uh, reached out his arms to catch such a aquatic creature, um, it's gonna be okay. It's gonna be okay. And at that point, you were like, "What? Like, who are you? Like, what? What is your stance in this?" And that's when Bell asks asks the questions for us. Which one are you? Are you are you the violent type that will do anything to get their way, or are you just a simple man, a simple being? But no answer. As she finally, she didn't leave, but she sh but he closed him up. He closed the door shut on to himself. She didn't leave yet, but she was just like appalled. At that point, it's like, man, you know that hits hard, cause you know you're in that you you know you're you know you feel what the dragon felt when you do the same thing. <laughs> so, you know, so at that point, it's like you want to be you want to leave the guy alone. Uh, at that point, you want to leave the guy alone. You want to respect him. At that point, um. And just and then we come we cut back to where uh, we cut back to Suzu is in real life and uh, had a little encounter once again with uh, his ch her childhood her best childhood friend um, because apparently so, so, there was some bit of a misunderstanding oh my god I, I, I okay I had to like extend this part okay so he goes out right uh, he goes out of school. Um, she can't help but write the lyrics in her head about a love song because she, she never written a love song before and um as she did that she kind of reminisced the she reminisced what the what the beast is and all that i'm missing a lot of points here as i explained so <laughs> sorry well, about that exactly wrote a love song but more like a a song to gift to him to kind of sh oh okay show okay Woody. Yeah, I was kind of trying to backtrack on that because the moment he he shut he shuts her off, it cuts back to Suzu being in choir with the with the ladies, and that's what that's when and that's when this one of the, one of the ladies told a story about what uh, about the little romance thing he little romance encounter she had when she was in Ohio and that was a beautiful story oh my god that she, was hilarious that was great right <laughs> she went to high school in Ohio um, that was cute that was, that was cute and it was actually a good um, I wouldn't say a segue but good foreshadowing as well yeah it was a beautiful foreshadow of what led to with the events later but to explain one of the ladies went to Ohio uh, for high school to finish off her high school days one of the one of the young uns had a liking to her, I guess. But uh, sorry, I shouldn't say that. One of the young uns was a uh, rebel. Well, she was like, he was a she was a lone wolf. He had he like, like Tuni Bio. He's like, <laughs> no, I don't think she was Tuni. I think she she he was just emo. I think I don't know. 
like a very lonesome wolf that's emo and uh, like very alone a lot in the cases. But um, later on, um, she before she left, she left to leave the country. Uh, she would uh, gift him a song. Uh, I don't know where. And at that point, like that kind of like. I kind of solidified um, the beautiful part of the story because um, as she was leaving, uh, the same boy that he she gave the song to s tried to see her off at the airport. And I'm like, oh, man. <laughs> that was the end. Yeah, at that point, like, even though, like, he was, like, very alone and whatnot, I think it was just more so, like, people mistaking him of his looks or personality and and the fact that the, and that's why he was alone and that the fact that lady gave him a chance anyway even though she he had no chance because he was a lot uh, he was a lot younger than her um she still get gifted him a song and that um that gave susan an idea um in uh, for a specific someone um uh, but let's not for I, but let's not jump too hard into this when this uh so after that little co concert meetup i uh, sorry choir meetup she'll walk around the side of the river and just sang to herself what kind of what kind of song that she would sing for i guess the beast but not just the beast right talk about your boy uh work uh I keep seeing your boy. It's like I'm forgetting already. Uh, sh sh not not. Sh is it Shinobu? Uh, yeah, Shinobu. The the childhood friend that like, um, what wanted to like you know protect Suzu when he was when they were kids. Remember that? Mm. I think it was Shinobu. It. Yeah, so Shinobu, so Shinobu, uh, was in the picture. So the first, so the first thing you know about him is that they're childhood friends, and that, you know, he, she, uh, Susan would get flashbacks sometimes about what sh he said to her regarding like protecting you no matter what. She, she simply mm -hmm. thought she thought it was a cute like uh, a confession at the time, but at that point it's just you know protecting her from bullies. And I don't think she was being bullied at all. I think, uh, more like she. But she do, but he do anything to like protect her somewhat, regardless. Uh, but then high, but then of course high school be, could be like a different beast, because what happened was, um, after that one encounter with uh, with Shinobu, you know, just giving a little talk and like just wanting to check up on her, Shinobu grabs <laughs> her hand out of nowhere, mm. right, and just she he just wants to talk, he just wants to talk, and Suzu just kind of like enjoyed the moment. Until she saw the crowd behind him. I'm like, oh no. And she had to shake it off. She had to shake off his hand and kind of walked off and be like, don't worry about it. Um, <laughs> how do you explain this like part? Uh, where like she would check her phone sometimes because she wanted to write like the lyrics that she made as she was saying along the river. And apparently it was like uh, a civil war inside her phone. <laughs> Uh, where all the ladies try to like explain like what happened, what happened? It, 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 did she, that was did she funny. Did she uh, I, I love Susan that scene. Susan, RTS. Oh RTS. Oh RTS. <laughs> it became an RTS battle within the thing, and I'm like, what's going on? What's happening? Is this what we really portrayed like, like Twitter, Discord, like Reddit war? Like it's just like a giant like RTS shit. Oh my god. So, so we got yeah, and then like. And then her friend has to like be the middleman and has to like negotiate with everyone just to calm the situation down. Yeah, that's crazy. <laughs> so with 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 uh with Hiro covering some tracks of the facts, she uh, Suze had to step up and be like, "There's nothing going on," and uh, at least two simple words. There's not there's nothing going on. She wouldn't he he wouldn't date someone like me anyway. And then that that was the one word, line that I. Thought, I don't think that's correct, but that's not the point. The point is to try to like calm down the storm, and then yeah, big words like truce came up. I'm like, oh my god, <laughs> this is so stupid. This is so stupid, and that's when you think, you know what? That's like the internet. The whole internet's stupid when it comes to drama and shit. Like at that point, you you do you do the most you do the mo anything to kind of like uh, tone down the storm. 
uh, somewhat by just even being blunt. Be like, he wouldn't do that to me. The heck? <laughs> Come on. So we got to that phase. And then, um, man, she really, like, she really, like, um, she set herself where she, where she thinks she belongs from what she said to Shinobu after, after a long time of Shinobu, like, keeping an eye on Suzu. That's when Suzu stepped up, stumped her foot and said, you don't have to do any, you don't have to worry about me as much anymore. And she kind of, but she kind of kept herself to that because even Shinobu doesn't even hear it as Suzu walked away. As she keeps calling her out, uh, he keeps calling her out. It's like, at that point, yeah, you also feel bad for uh, Suzu at that point. Kind of sets the tone for what the story is going to be about as um, we get to uh, the beast, uh, get back to Belle's, uh, Suzu's avatar, Belle, uh, in, the, in, in the same room where they left off. Where the aquatic creature kind of like, yeah, saucy indeed. The aquatic creature um, went up, opened the door for Belle to kind of walk into. And it's, um, and you look up to see like a cracked photo of a woman. It's like, what's going on? Like, and the root, the. When you go into someone's room, that like showcases what their behavior is, right? Sometimes, <laughs> what do you think? What do you think about the? When you set up your own room, do you think it? Do you think it identifies you? Yeah, it generally it gives you like a good idea of who the person is. Yeah, yeah, because my room's messy, <laughs> and I'm a messy guy. But uh, what about you? Reg? Oh. What about you, Reg? What's your What's your room look like? Um, yeah, my not. room is basically just like, uh, the best Sorry. friend's room, just teched, decked out with tech. So, six monitors, boys, I still have to take a picture of that, so. Do I have to recite that now? Great. <laughs> okay, no, okay. I'm not gonna do it, I'm not gonna do it. I'm not doing that. Don't, don't, don't. Alright, so we get, and so, but at that point, the uh, bell still wants to reach out to him, regardless, and... The last straw was set from the from the beast, uh, and uh, called her out to run to go away, and that's when Bell just gave up and just, literally like cracked and just gave up and ran out. But um, she kind of forgot that she's in an area where, you know, it's kind of it's kind of like closed doors, closed off. Mm -hmm. um, so now she's being chased by justices, and now she's. Rip. Kind of a vigilante, and I'm like, what are you guys doing? She's an insect bystander. Oh, it, you're in a virtual world, there's nothing. Oh, well, what? what if she just wanders around like that? You call you call her sussy then? Come on, man. What if she wasn't? What if she never yeah, met? Sus by association. What if she never met? Classic the, Twitter wars. What if she never met that beast anyway, and then still some somehow like stumbles upon him? And still, yet, I guess they would still like, uh, Put her into a saucy baka moment there because like she's still sus for but the fact that you know she hasn't said anything about the beast but still like the moment she got revealed and the oh my god it's so stupid like you you know i already knew they were sus beforehand but to this stupidity it's like face palming moments i'm like god damn it like, this is another discord oh my moment god shut up shut up already and then the beast just um just comes out of nowhere to save her out get her out of there knowing at that point you knew where at that point you knew where uh justice is like and where the beast really is because they're both innocent and they just wanted a, a, a peace in mind and Fuck. <laughs> leave us, leave them alone. <laughs> Yet they chase after them, and you know, uh, it, it's it. At that point, it's like letting them. Oh my god, I'm I'm, re I'm recalling this moment where like the the justices were beating his back. The, the beast covered. Oh, Bell, that's oh, the beast oh, covered yeah. so yeah. so hard while uh, he's getting beat up, and I'm like, bro, this is this is like this is like high school over again. It's no, okay. <laughs> oh my god, so they beat him up. So they're trying Guys to are being the D-bags. Yeah, they're being fucking... Sorry, F-wording D-bags, bro. Uh, to the point where... <laughs> up until the point where the building comes up, and it was on purpose where he would take the biggest damage, smacking himself into the wall. As they f and as they fall on the sand, 
He gains consciousness just in time to float off back to the castle. And while he's in pain, you know, just, um, at that point, you, you kind of want to just leave him alone. But Bell finally kind of, like, residuates and, like, reveals that, you know, it hurts here. I get it. Like, they, they, form, they form a bond just because she finally understood where he is at that point. Mm. And he just wants comfort. And to me, and at that, after that follows the, I ought okay, it might have released last year, but to me, this is where it kind of solidifies my favorite, like, anime film of the year. Where they, not only she sang, like, not only she sang the song, but they danced to it. And it was a, it was the most beautiful, like, artistic moment ever. Because I would, like, because it's not just about her singing, it's about the secret roses came to play, the ballroom shows up, and you think, oh, it's the beauty beast all over again. But, you know, they float as well, and it's but like... it was the beauty and the beast. It is the beauty and the beast, but better. So, they float off. Oh my god, it's just... Uh, I can't... I shouldn't explain what the... What the... What that part is. I would like to have you guys watch it. Uh, whoever's listening right now. Like... The visuals of that of the song, uh, the visuals plus the song playing in the background just made the entire segment of that film like something to remember for a long while. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Not for at the moment, nothing can top that part. I don't think watching Beauty yeah, and Beast. I don't think watching the original Beauty and Be Disney film would even change that. I don't think so. Nah. -uh. <laughs> I mean, it's more. I mean, the bell itself is like more like. Is made for like the current era of the people. Yeah, the current. Yeah. Like it took the idea. Like it took the idea from like the, the old Disney Beauty and the Beast film and mm -hmm. made it like more modernized. Right. Kind of like how there's, how like you know how like a whole digital media consumption is like way mm -hmm. less compared to back then. And there's like a VR chat and what's happening. Yeah. It's like they cut that. They took that concept and made it into like a a movie in a sense. While keeping the the core element of the beauty and the beast, mm -hmm. exactly. Guess. Like uh, Bell's basically uh, like VTuber um, metaverse, right? Because if you think mm -hmm. about, it, they have this like like fast forwarding. It's like you're going to be let let's unveil the beast. It's like so let's dox the v the bad VTuber. I'm like okay. Uh, so <laughs> well, yeah. It did it's like out. let's let's cancel the beast. Oh my goodness. Yeah, that's basically what's ca what's happening. Yeah, let's cancel the beast. That, that was a whole culture going on in the film. Um so we So we got to that. Um but then you find out that she that but then you find out you're finding out that he's getting more scars somehow in his little oh, in his uh cape of scars. And you wondered how the heck did he get those? Right? And the question still remains: Who are you? Who really? She even in the dub. She even uh, in the dub. She even says, "Please." And, um, and at that point, you really wanted to like just help him out. But the story continues on to its own. Uh, it continues back to Suzu, wondering who this person was. And then I think that's where the climax comes in, uh, somewhat. Where Belle was minding her own business in the regular world, and then just as it's just someone appear out of nowhere like ninjas, four of them. It takes it takes four people to like take down one person apparently in the world of you, because that's what happened. Belle disappeared and was sat down in the uh, in like I guess like a interrogation room with Justin himself. I wish Atali was here for this part, but she's mute at the moment. But. Uh, oh. <laughs> that's fine. Well, I, we'll get to that. Uh, so that's so that's when Atali's part would come in. Uh, Atali's like kind of point here would come and be like, uh, where uh, where justices are stat, uh, are where justices are doing in this world. You know why there's no police involved. You know why there's no other like security former security involved, but us. You know that, right? Kind of deal. And I'm just here sitting like. I don't think the police has even have time to introduce themselves. They just go straight to the point, right? That the 
like this court, I guess this court must do this where they're like, do you know why we're doing this to you, kind of deal? Do you know why you're banned from this channel? You know, like that kind of stuff. And I'm just, I was here sitting. Oh, here that's like, that's creepy. That's scary. Know, it's, it's very creepy. I'm just here to like cut to the chase. Just cut to the chase. The police, the police is like, you know how like in, you know how like you're driving down and you get stopped by the police. The introduction is them sitting in the car. And then when they walk to you in intimidation, their, yeah. And then, when they walk to the window, that's when they cut to the chase, right? So this is your fine here and there. They go straight to the point and to the reason. You're not gonna give them question. You're not gonna ask them. You know why you're here, all right? You're not gonna do that. But that's what Justin does, and that's when you think this is cringe. Is he gonna pop up a sponsor feed again in front of her too? Oh my gosh! I was, I was waiting for that. We're like, do you know why I have these sponsors? <laughs> <laughs> it, Actually, yeah, I was, I was, I was feeling that. I was, I was wait, feeling I was that. Have happened, like, you know why? How these sponsors kind of deal just shows up like the giant, like giant big logos behind his back. I was like, that'd be a, even a bigger, funnier moment still, but still. Um, and then we, and then, and then that's when like he just blows, he just like exploded, grabs her in the fucking like head, I think. And like points the beat, points the unveil machine at her. That's when you think like the unveil gun, the unveil gun, <laughs> Man, it's, Mega it's Man. Like, and that's when you dream. think like, and that's when you know like you can't like justice may have its own thing, but it's just man, that's just fucked. Like that point, like you know where they stand. They just want they want to get uh, at that point. It's like the police, like they want to get paid. They they want something done straight up. Uh, they they want something to uh, happen. More like they want to. The they want everything under their control. Exactly. Yeah, it's it. it uh, that's just straight up manipulation. Yeah, it's like Nintendo currently. Uh, uh, anyway. Um, oh, wow. Yeah. Current topic. That's yeah, shot. That's, that's, <laughs> yeah, later. We'll talk about it later. Um, <laughs> another episode. Wink, wink. Um, so, so, and I'm luckily, you know, uh, somehow the NPCs, uh, the Beast NPCs uh, <coughs> found them. Uh, kind of surround surround Justin with like vi visuals of like what's happening here and there, all in the efforts to rescue Bell. What one fainted, unfortunately, because because Justin punched him, and um, unfortunately, that's what led to the events that will happen later, involving uh, uh, the the hopefully the fi the final takedown where, of where the beast is. Just to um, just to try and unveil his ass. So, so basically reveal his uh, real identity for those who are unfamiliar with the term unveil. Yep, and that's what we're going for. But just like the persona, the what? Reveal yourself. Oh yeah. Takes out the mask. Takes out the mask. <laughs> there you go. So we got, Oh my gosh. But beforehand, though, um, wait. I'm trying to remember where it says. Oh yeah. Uh, so back, but back to um, Suza's world in the real, in the real world. Uh, she met up with Ruka about her confession, uh, her confession moment. Because before, before the before meeting up with the Beast again the second time doing the dance thing, Suzu was cheering on Ruka to confess to Shinobu. Suzu's court. Suzu's childhood um, kind of lover kind of thing. Um, <laughs> So at that point she was teared up, but Ruka, in the end, still couldn't do it. He he could admit to Nashinobu Kamishin. And then <laughs> Think about it. Oh my gosh. Why would Ruka What what what's with Kamishin that appeal to Ruka? And I I I, I guess. <laughs> I, it's kind of like an I guess moment there, cause, uh, cause you were you were like saw Paul like Ruka is so Ruka is such a be beautiful being right where she stands she she's top of her grade she does the saxophone in a band yet she likes shakes and that's what you kind of for, if you recall from the very beginning the the <laughs> the the, the, cl the club thing where like Kamishin makes a commotion with her fuck with his fucking like throat with his paddles. Everyone tries to run away from him, but the but oh my god! Why did I why did I for, why did I see that coming? Ruka looks away from Kamishin, yet looks at Kamishin with her eyes. I'm like, wait, 
what's that about? But when she said, I'm like, that scene. Wow. That scene, like she just she just held her face for the longest time. I wanted to take like a skirt, like a, a picture of that, but I was in the theater, so I couldn't. So no, like, I wanted to make that my wallpaper. I was good. That was that was the meme. That that's my new emote. That's my new animated emote. Uh, okay, okay. So we get to that right. First time you, the first time he said these lines, it was on. Oh, sorry, no, we'll, we'll go back to that. Um, so then we get, so and we're, we're I'm just a, a shock that she know, but when she said she made the comic machine, like, he, comic machine, and then that's what that's when uh, Ruka figured out, oh, I know who your crush is now, huh? It's like, oh no, she nah, <laughs> she nah means I'm dead. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, you should get that. So uh, I'm dead. Uh, I'm also dead from all that from all that embarrassment. <laughs> for uh, I'm dead for she know uh, for Sh for Sh Suzu. So um, and that's when uh, Suzu opened up that uh you know he he was a childhood friend that literally literally confessed to her, but but in the end it's more like protecting her from specific things. Nothing really matter going on. But Ruko opened up, said that um Shinobu was. Every, I guess Ruka knew about um, Suzu's, um, you know, f family situation where, you know, the mother passed as well. Uh, the mother passed, um, and as uh, a long time ago, she's still coping. And that she apparently she knew Shinobu was keeping an eye on her for the longest time, you know, no matter. Uh, no matter what, like he would always look at her. He's like the he's like the other mother for Suzu, and at that point you feel bad for Shinobu. <laughs> I mean, like, man, just keep an eye on her for like she. He didn't even have he didn't even have to, but she, he he do it. He did it for her. Um, it's just ver it's very cute. It's very cute. So at that point, it's like uh, Suzu knows a little bit more about Shinobu, and that you know she should probably like. Not take advantage of him anymore. Not take advantage of his feelings anymore. But to like, you know, approach a little bit more to Shinobu at that point. And then we, and then we cut to them going back to the train station. Let me, uh, let me pause the OSC real quick and just re remember this best scene in the movie ever. I thought, oh my god, it was a dancing scene with uh, Bell singing "Lend Me Your Voice" was the best, but no, it was Kami Sheen coming in a clutch. So the first thing you would ever think <laughs> about, the first thing you ever see Kami, uh, first time you see Kami Sheen say these words is when Suzu saw him rolling in a boat, uh, and that's. Uh, and Shinobu was literally waiting for him to like, you know, cause she, I guess Shinobu was picking him up, you know, pack her, uh, wait for him to be done. The, and the moment he's done, right? Like, uh, Kamishin shows up, um, talks to Suzu and all that. Like, kind of introduces, uh, and kind of, uh, show, t says that he's practicing for the big nationals coming up. Um, uh, she, after, uh, she cheers him on. You know, Susan says, "Good luck in the upcoming events. I'm cheering you on." And the the words "I'm cheering you on" echoes in his head. It's like, <laughs> Kamishin. Oh, like this was foreshadowed beforehand. Kamishin, no, Kamishin, no. And I, I, I knew, I knew, I fucking knew the moment. Kamishin's like, oh, it, it really? You, you cheering me on? Uh, it, hey, Shinobu. <laughs> oh no. Uh, Shinobu's this is like, a good passion. No, like what? Kamishin's like, when when a girl a girl uh, did she cheers you on? Does that mean? And she looks at he looks at Shinobu uh, Suzu's like <laughs> stone cold face. <laughs> Are? Uh, no, no, like you don't like me? Oh, okay, okay, right, moving on. Uh, sorry about that. <laughs> I'm, just, I'm just joking. I'm just joking. I'm just here, like. Bruh, <laughs> I, 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 the best part of that, that, out of no matter how many times you I watch that film, the entire theater fucking laughs at that at that segment. <laughs> it's, uh, it's the best. <laughs> it's the best. So now, we cut back to Ruka and Suzu walking back to the train station. <laughs> Kamishin was just in the background. I looked at Kamishin first. 
before I look back to the other two. And then Ruka saw him. I'm like, oh no. Oh no. <laughs> <laughs> Ruka, Ru- like ten, mo- ten times more funnier because he's just so awkward, and they he's like so in the beginning of the movie they make it out. It's like they, this in, this in, guy in is the like movie, the, the weirdo, movie. and it just yeah. <laughs> in the movie he even in that movie like that. It's just one scene. The camera stood still in that one scene. No other scenes besides that one close up, but just that one segment or where he where they are. It's like um. Ka- Kamishi is just sitting awkward in the corner, and all it took is Ruka's like uh, heart throbbing eye to look at Kamishi and then says, Kamishi. And Kamishi looks up, eh? And at that point, oh no. <laughs> and, but the, the, the best part of that, it, 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 it goes back to Ruka being awkward now. She's, he's like, she's like, ah, ha, 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 I'll cheer you on. You, you got this. And, uh, and and I fucking do it. And Kamishin was like, "Hey, eh, eh? you, you, you're cheering me on." <laughs> Even cool, popular girls who you think you have it all c- together can definitely have an awkward side, you know? Because love. <laughs> yeah, because that's what love is. Oh my god, I can't believe this happened. So the fa- the audacity of this bitch that she questioned herself again. Like, when you're cheering me on. Does that mean you 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 like me? Drops her bag. Suzu looks at him. <laughs> it's like, oh. He? <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I'm making the noises that happened in the theater at that time. Everyone bursts out laughter. And Suzu was just like, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. <laughs> and I'm with Suzu. was like, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. <laughs> Uh, I'm replaying the same scene in my head. Sorry, uh, after watching many times, that will forever be in my head. For the 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 dashy, this bitch like walks back out to the from the from the station. I was like, hey, come back here. <laughs> Suzu chase after him, tries to tell him, why don't you just tell her? Oh, I'll, I'll do my best, or thank you, or something. Uh, he comes back in. Oh, oh. Walks back out again. Susie pulls it back in. It was like, no, no, you got this. Come on. <laughs> and uh, well, he uh, and then that's when uh, Kamishin gives it. Walks back in. It's like, do do uh, do you have a favorite music? <laughs> and then uh, uh well, actually, I, no, I think it's the first thing. It says, do you like music? And then of course she, of course she likes music. <laughs> she plays a damn. She plays a saxophone and violin. And, um, oh, I see. Uh, at that point, at that point, it's like, it's a, <laughs> uh, at that point, that's the is where they're at right now. And, and that side, that's a side, if, if that, what, if that's a side story, if that's a side story, that was the best side story I've ever heard in, like, a film. Because, uh, later on, you would, uh, find out about the other, other like characters right uh uh the characters that they investigated because at that point you had to figure out who are who is the beast and confirming from their investigation um they figure out that the guy with the tattoos uh has nothing to do with it because he would find another lover later on and that um they were dating anyway to kind of help coping to help with his coping uh that's good uh, it was kind of obvious where the woman is at that point because she does have an avatar in you, but she's just a baby in that. And I'm like, great, that's funny. <laughs> so it, it, at that point, it's like, I don't, I don't care about the woman anymore. She's just, she's just a, it's an awkward back in the end. And then the, and then the baseball guy was, uh, I'm, I, I don't care if he's fictional. I'm clapping for the dude. Like this guy, like shows off with like his scars in his chest and everything. It's like. So, I hope I hope didn't mean to scare you, but I had a lot of surgeries when I was a kid to kind of help recover where I am right now. Uh, I hope I hope this is a mark to all the all the kids in the world that you shouldn't give up in your dreams, and you should keep going where you're at, and you shouldn't give up, and that kind of deal. And that was a that was a be- that was a beautiful story to me as well. 
Uh, yeah, that was scary when I saw that, but inspirational at the it's, same it's, time. Because all those scars, it, it, but he still managed to make his dreams come true. It, all that scars is he plays baseball of all sports. Like that's baseball. Sure, you're just swinging a bat, but you're doing a lot of stuff regardless to like make stuff happen in a baseball game. So, with that in mind, right? Um, you wonder who who is this guy, and um, it. It cuts back to it finally cuts back to the one um, scene where um, you figure out who was uh, how long are we in right now who was the guy who was the um, who was the aquatic creature we find out that it was well you think he he think that uh, the innocent man that uh, the innocent man uh, singing her song singing the gifted song was the beast but no. Something's wrong, right? And then the abusive father comes in and does what he does best. Abuses kids. Who for just simply interrupting them. For interrupting his work. What I don't even see what work he does. <laughs> it's crazy. Man, um, a little bit of a warning. <laughs> yeah, so a little bit of warning, uh yeah, yeah, a bit of a warning straight up. Like uh this this segment may trigger a lot of people. Um, but that's a, that's a, that's a, you're already deep into this film. Yeah, at that point, you should be expecting something, right? You, you, you're expecting, you've seen Justin. You see what he did to Belle. At that point, you'd be expecting something like that later on. So it happened in real life, apparently, to, uh, this poor kid that may not, may not, may not be, may not be, uh, okay in the head, but still, like, deserves a lot of love. Yet, this man had the audacity to just, Make one big bam, and that's enough for the kid to, like, you know, st not only stop, but like, fail on the floor. It's like very, very, like, you couldn't do anything but just, like, watch the horror, right? You, you're, 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 you're in a theater, right? You're in a theater, but Suzu and Hiro were in, in their own seats looking at the horror happening in the, in the screen of theirs, right? Uh, you can't you can't do anything but watch how how bad it's going to happen, and then another character comes in to, um, because uh, at that point the uh, the poor the poor kid was on the ground like, just taking it all in, taking all the bad things that the dad was like giving to the kid, and then I guess that was his brother coming in, <coughs> just um to try to cover try to cover uh, the poor kid's ears. K, his name is K, by the way. The co the second kid coming in, like trying to like, uh, trying to like cover his ears that like, everything's gonna be fine, everything's gonna be, everything's gonna be fine. Well, the dad just gives off like verbal abuse and shit. It's crazy. Mm -hmm. Like, yeah, and that it's crazy. It, it's crazy. It's even crazier to think that verbal abuse may be verbal, but it's still a lot for a kid, because the kid will like shook up, because he was expecting when he the moment he moved his like body. As he's trying to cover his brothers, his brothers' uh, ears, he was expecting like a punch. He was expecting a beat up. He's expecting a physical contact from his father. But no, it's just words on words on words. And at that point, Suzu figured out who the beast is. No matter what kind of abuse he got, physical or, ver or verbal, abuse and abuse, and that's what the scars are for. And you and you know that the world of you should not be underestimated. And that, at that point, like, you'd be surprised why no one else has figured that out already. <laughs> so, so that's where, that's where they are. And, um, Belch, uh, sorry, Suzu trying to reach out. Um, but still couldn't do anything because at that point, the, the real K comes in and just, because apparently it happened before where, like, people try to reach out, but either couldn't do anything because of how japan's like uh japan's uh what do you call it like uh foster care services are at the time i guess is treated or he was being mistreated unfairly or being made fun of you know through the same help that he tried to reach out for at that point he couldn't do anything but just rant about it he ranted to her face you think you can help? Do you think you can help? And I don't want to repeat those lines because I think it's 
uh, I think I I can't ju- I I can't just justif- serve justice to what the film portrayed, how the film kind of portrayed it. So you should watch that if you haven't. Oh, oh sorry, you read watch that segment if you haven't. <laughs> Assuming you've already watched it and not spoiling yourself. <clears throat> so at that point, you know where Suzu stands. He can't. She can't do anything. Even Hero reminded her about that part. Like they not only she doesn't, not only they don't know you, but. Like, he closed, uh, K closed his door, so he's not gonna ask for any more help. But, but you think that's where they stopped. But, in the same room, Shinobu, Kamishin, um, Kamishin and, um, uh, Ruka, and the choir ladies are in the same room. Because at the same time, in the other world of you, uh, Bell was trying to look for him while. They were destroying, um, they were showing up, uh, the beast's castle. It's crazy how it all went down. It went, it, how, it's great how it all went down from like, you know, not only like burning the castle, but like even beating up the NPCs. I can't believe, I can't believe he said the words. They're just NPCs. This doesn't, they, they don't matter. And I'm here just sitting here like, fuck you. You're also an NPC. <laughs> anyway. So that when that happened, they had a role play. She finally met up to the beast after one of them like opened the secret door to where he really is. He's physic he's physically down, beat up and all that. You can't help you can't help it but feel bad for the beast and that he really couldn't do anything. And at that point, like you he at that point he really he said he even said sorry that he can't like <coughs> say anything more about where who he is really and he just disappeared to the crowd of the world of you then i can't believe this all it took was the childhood friend to do that but shinobu comes in clutch right gave her the idea and you know what i'm gonna talk about one of the best songs i believe in this film came into play uh, she sang it out the the best part is uh, about that film, uh, about that song, the OST uh, is sang in studio version, right? But in the film, is acted out, so it's not it's it's not sung in the same um, way as the studio version uh, of in the OST album. So when you hear in the film, it's literally it's literally how Suzu felt at the moment. Not like in studio version where like she's perfectly sang it. So that's another tidbit if you want to like listen to the song a million miles away in Japanese, or it's like in, or in English even, like both versions like they actually sung it out as if they're in a the moment. It's beautiful. Mm. Man, I never. <laughs> and that if she sung it out, she, uh, you know, in a, in a, in like the biggest, I guess, biggest brain play possible. I say big brain at the same time she unveiled herself. So I don't know what she really thought of until that moment. But the moment she knew that she couldn't do anything, uh, she waited, she waited the right moment until Justin comes down to, to, to Belle's avatar to shoot her off, unveil her. And you never thought she would have to do that until at that moment. So the moment she unveiled herself, the whole world was in shambles, of course. And that's when, like, that's when her dearest friends and uh, her dearest friends comes in close to see where she is, what she's doing, what she's up to. And then Shinobu just says, like, well, why don't you just sing? And just si- and sang a million miles away right there. I never thought I would. Actually, wait, I want to hear from your from you two, Reg and uh, Hibiki. What are your thoughts on that part? Where she sang me was away. Oh, uh, don't quite remember how the song went. Da, da. Hold on, let me try to play it. And my amp part. It's like they were. So she was, she, like the real Suzu in in the world of uh you came out, and it's like a simple like ominous piece. Da, la, la, la. Da, 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 da. It's like um, I really can't explain it. I like I'm, I'm gonna show you this like 
song. Sure. That's fine. I I'm gonna have you, uh, I'm gonna have you, like, share this part. Um... Uh, so you can like li safely listen to it on your on your end. It, it's not it's already repeat on my end, by the way. So because <laughs> it's so good of a piece. Uh, hold on, let me just do something. Here. Sure. But this is her. But keep in mind, right? Throughout the whole so throughout the whole movie, um, throughout the whole movie, it's like. Like the 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 reason why I came back many times is for the music. Until I until I find out that it was already on YouTube, uh, I just kept going back for the music. Uh, and it's such a beautiful it, even in dub, like it was really like translated beautifully. Yeah. Uh... So so we get to that. Um. So we get to that part, and it's, um, my god. Like, if you read up the lyrics to this, look up the lyrics to this, you can't help but, like, figure out, like... You can't help but, like, feel like you really want to recommend this film to a lot of people that you know in your life, especially in a pandemic, right? In this okay, pandemic. now I know what song you're talking about. You really want to share this song to a specific people, you know, but you want to share the whole film. Uh, you want to share about the whole film to the people that you know in your life that changed you, uh, that changed you, that inspired you, that helped you open up a little bit, especially in this time, around this time. This film came out at the right time. And when the Minimum Way song, I can't help but like relate to it so hard that you, you know that you know how you, you know how hard it, you know how hard it is to accept what the song is trying to say when you look up the lyrics and like understand what the what the theme is about and it hurts you it hurts you to the core it reaches you to the core it doesn't even hurt you it reaches your core and embraces you it's such a soft somber song it may not be a song uh the the themes of the songs in this film may not be for many people but, you know, if you relate to it in a way, you'll, it'll definitely hit you deep. It'll definitely reach to you deep. Mm. So, we're coming in at an hour and 30 minutes in of just a summary part. So, I'll end up with this. Um, after she sang that, I'm hap happy to say that um, Kay, Kay uh, actually reached out to her personally. To the same voice call uh and despite all the commotion that happened after that she susan made the attempt to go to them in person they're very they're, at least they're in japan they're, they're, that's that's done that's done and under Whew, they'll, they'll be so awkward she they were in another country right um so with that um they went they went and visited her and even the ost in that in that part was like amazing it's the same song, but like, uh, play differently. And with the rain effects and everything, it's like... It's beautiful, it's perfect. So... Of course, hap kind of a happily ever after here and there with the... With, with however Suzu helped them out. There were still a lot of questions about that, but... A film is a film. It's an art, it's an art in its own form. Uh, and that uh, it ended beautifully. To me, at least. Right? It ended in a way that you hope that it kind of ends. A somewhat of a resolve, but not just for Kay, but for Suzu and her surroundings herself. And that's what Bell is about. It's a simple, it's a simple movie about you know, reach uh, how the online, how the online community works, how a simple, a simple life can be so harsh still. And have its own hardships and that how reaching out can be somewhat helpful in a way. Right? You guys have your own yeah, thoughts on that? Yeah. Honestly, it's kind of funny too. Because you people say that things kind of a lot. You know, like, mm. oh, whenever you're in trouble, just, just reach out to somebody. 
It's not or easy. Like if, Even that is not easy. And yeah, that film kind of portrays yeah. that as well. So yeah, they always say like, if you're ever in trouble or need needing some sort of help, like just reach out to somebody. They're always there to help. But mm -hmm. but in reality, like people always talk shit behind your back, <laughs> yeah. in person, online. And, That's why you gotta ask sometimes, like. That I, and even mm -hmm. if you try to ask, like. You always have this constant fear mm -hmm. that yeah, that's what stops you. That you will still get judged for it for even re even simply just reaching out mm -hmm. just because others said like others said so. Yeah, and yeah, that's it's like this whole stigma going on daily in this like modern times. Like even if you try to reach out, you're afraid that your secret might get told by other people and make fun of. Or they just simply say like, "Oh, I'm just, oh, I'm always here for it," but it's just an empty promise. That that's the thing. Like that's that thing. That's a big part of that. It's all online, right? Everything in it is empty promise. You can't you can't literally promise someone, even virtually. Like they have to make a schedule. If anything, you know how VTubers work. You have to set up a schedule. Otherwise, um, it's um, yeah. nothing set in stone, right? It makes more sense in person. Like, I think that's what also kind of highlighted with Sue going, Suzu going to them in person. It's like that's that is a promise. That itself is a promise, right? B Vtuber meetups, like that, that kind of solidifies friendships. I'd say, you you met this person online, you collab with them, yes, but they're not. I'd say, I and I, I'm gonna hold out to what Garn said in, tra in Trash Taste. They're not real friends unless you meet them in person. I'd say. Even if you met them online mm -hmm. first, right? You met them through email. I guess around the time you met them through email, you met them to like to watching their videos or like watching or like you know just somewhat like interacting with them somewhat in an online like Teamspeak or Skype even. But no, 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 no. Like I was questioning why they let her go on her own. At all, she got this. <laughs> yeah, exactly. It, no, it. I think I think the film is trying to cross the message that it online isn't an online some okay online isn't enough not sometimes always online always is never enough you need you need you need to if you want to set something in stone meet up in person like because sometimes a voice a voice call may work maybe but that's that because it's better than text sometimes voice calls is better than text messages but if you want to be you want to be real up real up in person like for something important mm. being in person is what uh is what really solidifies that uh it's it's crazy but here we are uh <laughs> here we are now with the uh, end of it and that uh how i reflect on it and it's um even uh, even after that, it still hits hard that like it's, it's watching the movie over and over is simply reminding me over and over again that I think it's all right to it's all right to have such bad, bad problems in your life sometimes and that it's OK to reach out. But just like what Kay has been doing before meeting up with Suzu, you know, it's not it's sometimes not it's sometimes like released in a bad connotation you'd be judged differently like all those people like the big the big like uh, let's say the uh, the whole like majority kind of took beast in a different light because they think of himself as a different a specific person that they wouldn't think otherwise right when reality mm -hmm. you know it's just a simple kid that has troubles with his home life that led him to the development of this character that he made in you is it something you can't edit right he just he, it was just made for him right so um let's get to that uh we finished up with a summary though at least that's kind of done sorry it took like an hour and 30 minutes on that um but, yeah, uh, good. Track, but, but like how Whoa, what was that? Uh, yeah, he's he's on 3G apparently. <laughs> he's on radio talk. <laughs> radio talk. <laughs> he's using the radio to speak, not uh not his phone. Yeah, anyway. Uh we're gonna go over to like what are your thoughts on uh what are your thoughts on the film uh visually and 
music wise? Like, do you think there could be some improvement? Do you think it's good enough? What do you guys think? There's always room for improvements, honestly. Yeah. To a friend of mine pointed out saying it's too abstract. <laughs> I'd say that's true. Um, a lot of I saw a lot of reviews as well regarding that. Um, and that um Mamoru Hosoda, he made a lot of beautiful films beforehand as well that I will check out actually probably after this after our podcast I'll probably like um, get on a, another this good call with my friends to just watch uh, another Mamoru Hosoda film to prove that Bell is not just a good it's not it's not a greatest film yet not one of his greatest films yet it is but it's not his best apparently but it's just fine because there are other greater films that he made down uh, beforehand and that this was his best attempt at what I think is a beautiful theme to a current situation. And honestly, it's the best we ever got visually. No, I don't think anything, I don't think any other film will top off what Bell has offered to us in regards to... Really? Yeah, in regards to the same theme of like online, the online world and like... You know, all that jazz. Not even SAO anymore. <laughs> SAO is on Yeah, that's SAO true. Is like so like, overrated. Uh, yeah, the, the, besides the overrated thing, like even the story thing, even story wise, I think it's like its own realm. But Bell is just at a perfect time to like, in, to reach out to the anime fans of the, or even like, or like movie lovers of the world to like understand where we are right now. And it's a beautiful, it's a beautiful piece. <laughs> it's a beautiful message that Mom, yeah. he gave us. So yeah. A any thoughts on like, that? If anyone wondered uh, what the metaverse is, that's basically uh, uh, Bell the movie represents what the metaverse will look like in the future. Don't, so and uh, on on side note, don't ever compare the Bell movie to the metaverse because that's fucked up. Uh, <laughs> it's also oh ugly. it's, ugly. it's, it's <laughs> uglier. It's also uglier as well. Come on, man. Uh, but I. <laughs> Okay, I say that, I say that, but I haven't exactly touched upon it, my bad, but what I'm saying is, um, I guess Facebook's attempt of a, you know, like a bell world, like, uh, or, sorry, or like a, its own different world, I guess, because I've seen it, C can you at least maintain like an, a real avatar? <laughs> <laughs> it's just, it's, it's. It's, yeah. It reminds me when I when I saw that game. Oh, I said game. Uh, when I saw that world, it reminds me of that w one video game, uh, one mini game where like uh, you're you're in a restaurant. You you're it's a co-op game where you make like food for the customers, but it's co-op, and the oh, yeah. and the models are overcooked. No, 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 no. It's a it's a it's a it's a really weird game, but. It's, but the models are made out of like tubes and like two French fry sticks as hands. The fuck? Yeah, it's it's weird. You could... Yeah, the game overcooked. No, no, no. Overcooked is way cleaner than this really old game. But it reminded me. Really? Yeah, but it reminded me of that. That metaverse reminded me of that game that is very very jank. <laughs> it's so funny, but you know, I think metaverse has yet. If metaverse wants to reach that level, it has lot. It has lots to improve. A lots, lots. If anything, I'm still wait. I'm still waiting for the nerve gear to be a real thing. All right. Oh yeah. I don't care if I'm 50 or 60. I will get that nerve gear when that when that happens. And I will. I don't care if I pass away. At least my virtual model will be in that world, just wanders around like a newbie and it's a kite in its own way. Anyway, uh, yeah. I, fe I feel though like they, they have half dive gear in the universe of you, right? Yeah. So like I loved how they presented the earbuds and then you yeah. could still be present in the real world, but also online yeah. see, in the like. virtual world at the see, same time. See, that's what that's that's my, that's one of the questions I have for this film. Like, how did that how did how was that a thing? Like, how what did they thought of what they just thought or or did they just, did they just posted that idea because they have nothing else to think of? They get they're not gonna make her wear a helmet all the way around no because because around her the scenarios of this film has ha has to have her like run around while wearing those things so in a way um the, a helmet w of the nerve gear helmet wouldn't fit in the world of bill so i think at that point this is it's yeah. very very fictional but you know i don't i don't it's not impossible if they could go that far 
But that's up to the human brain. Yeah. But that's up to the scientists and the human brain could even think of that. But that's not for me yeah. to like think well, of. So. <laughs> that's something. Yeah. Well, it's actually closer to reality than you think, right? So it's just yeah. that all the stuff is just in prototyping, right? Because at first you have to prototype, then you have to commercialize, bring it to market. So mm. if that stuff already exists, they just had to patent it and make it into an actual product, which takes a month, like whole bunch of research, marketing, bunch. Bleh, and, and money, right? It's the, so it's this whole high diving stuff. It's it's like a big topic ever since Sora Online was a thing, I guess. And uh, that uh, we, yeah. have, we have yet we have yet to find out what we what we can truly do in the real life, in what we have right now, physically. So mm-hmm. I, I just love the. Uh, it, it, it's not even like the point of the film anyway at least it, it brought up the concept again but uh, that's not the point of it and i'm glad i'm glad it's brought to light someone again so i think we're i think we're good at that um yeah what else we have <laughs> so we got the well music wise do you think um do you think it's what do you think of it like phenomenal i i i like um that soundtrack like holy smokes but, like i said earlier like the translation mm-hmm. over into english too because yeah. uh, mostly when you translate from japanese to english because japanese I, has more syllables I, I in comparison mis- to english yeah. but it was just mm. i made a mistake uh, by the way of the fact it's not a trans it's not a little translation from the artist it was actually kylie mccarley who, uh, who, who, who oh sorry kylie i forgot the name of her last name i think it's kylie mccarley who voiced suzu uh, uh, in the in English dub, actually sang for Millennium. Oh, wow. It was literally her. Wow. It was beautiful. That's impressive. She, she did it for, for them. I thought I thought it was Millennium for sure, but no, it was literally... Uh, oh, the, it was literally the... Dang, the girl can act. The girl can act and can sing for, for, for Suzu and Belle, I guess, and that's beautiful. Uh, and the fact that they're very, very close will will help some uh, <clears throat> Japanese sub lovers to appreciate the dub too. <laughs> but yeah. Especially, can I highlight this? Especially, especially okay. the lyrics, how they sang it too, because translation is hard. When you translate Japanese to English, it's gonna be like a one liner, like the one sentence. The when they mm. sang it, unless it's like a rap, unless it's rap. Like you can't when you rap, of course it's gonna be like a lot of fucking like like uh, a lot of kiragana cut the kind of here and there. But when you try to translate to English, it's gonna be shortened real fast because that's what the sentence is saying. So when it comes to translation, it has to be extended a lot further. And mm. what and Bell did a really uh, whoever directed the lyrics did a really good job uh, translating that. It, a million miles away hit harder mm. in English compared to Japanese. Uh, oh wow! Yeah, because and that's your opinion. That's my yes. That's okay. Because you yes, you always go with sub. I'm wow. No, okay, I, oh. There are the of course of course the little translation is always the best. But if you un but if you un if you put the if you put the shoes of the the tra- if you put in the shoes of the dub translators, you have to you, you really have to like and you have to. But that's where I have to, I guess, put myself in. I put myself in the shoes of like, yeah, bring it home. If what if though? Yeah. What if we never get the sub? What if we never get the sub? Of course, will, that never happen because of what this accessibility. But what if one day I'm too tired to like even listen to even read the lyrics? What if I lost my way to read the lines and just watch the film? What if I'm too lazy? <laughs> in the way, in other words, yeah. That's when I like what if you to- lost access to the sub, right? Yeah. So and, yeah, that's an exaggeration, but so I would listened to the dub first, and then and then there was and then apparently a sub follow up came along, so I was able to like compare. No matter what, dub just won me over. I don't know why. Oh wow! Yeah, um, of course, of course, the Japanese sub has beautiful. I have made a beautiful lines as well. I listened to both, of course. But I still like a look. Yes, it's been many, many times. Of course, I'm over it at this point. But listening to the dub, uh, listening to the dubs uh, version still tears me up a bit. Cause Aww. you, you, to me, right? Like, like to you guys, it's fine. Like to and to my clo- other close friends, it's fine. But I'm not that per- that kind of person to reach out easily. 
I close my doors. Oh. I'm the beast. I, I'm with the beast. Like I close my doors. <laughs> so fuck, fuck everyone else. No one understands my problems. No one will get it. No one will fucking get it. But then you have the one person. You, you have the one person in a crowd that wants to reach out to you, no matter what. The one. It, it, it doesn't even have to be the faded one. It doesn't have to be the one that you have to hook up with or anything. It could be just one person that just wants to talk to you, damn it. And that's what the film is about. That's what the film is trying to portray to the songs. And I, I listen over and over. Lend Me Your Voice is very, very close. A Million Miles Away, I'd say, is number one to me. Um, but in sub, in the Japanese versions, Lend Me Your Voice is number one. I'd say, like, cause of how they say, I, I guess it's how they say and how it's like translated well. But to, but Milwa's way in English to me like kind of overwhelms it a lot. But uh, th that I'm I'm slowly I'm, I like how I'm ranking the songs, but that's how it is uh, to me at least. But overall, the, the the OST is beautiful. But I'll never forget the very first uh, one of the first OSTs that played w up when Susan was a kid with her mother. Remember that? Ah, Shit, man. So cute. It was cute and like and tear it teared me up a bit. Se watching that the second uh, watching that the second time, I broke into tears immediately. <laughs> knowing What? Yeah. Wow. What usually happen. like watching it a second time people get more desensitized, right? Can, so well no to I uh, guess, but to me the second time it happened, like Fuck. Got more invested. It got more invested. Dang. Like that, it's just a segment with Susan and mother. Like that turned me up a bit a lot. It's like watching up the second time. Oh. It's like watching up the second time. You know, it's, you know what's gonna happen, and no matter no matter what, it will break you down because you know what's gonna happen. If you recall the movie Up, where like oh. the, couple, the couple, right? You can't oh. change yeah. the past. That's set in stone. This is their destiny. Yeah. It's... And the same thing for Belle, like. The moment, uh, my god, I can't, I can't, man. I'm looking back at that, like, I can't. I'm looking back at it now with a segment, and it's like, god, that's it is, it, it's, it, that, the, that part with Suzu and the mother kind of centers around where Suzu will be in life. She's a, she, she's a natural singer, and because, because of their mother, it's beautiful taste in music. <laughs> it's great, yeah, it's beautiful, and, um, she's good. Uh, uh, uh it's, that's... I like the how the old ladies were actually her mother's like singing oh crew. My so. God. <laughs> oh. Uh, uh, going back, fast forward to a million miles away segment where everyone just trying to sing la la la. Fuck, dude. Oh my gosh. Oh. Ex I, like that I, moment I, when she turns it around no, because it's just it's, it's just too much. The OST like. Doesn't do justice. Watch the film over. I, I don't care if you watch it the first time. Watch it again because the OSC doesn't do justice on a million miles away part where they sang that the crowd singing because that's extended over and over and over. Oh my god. When. Oh my god. <laughs> the part where the lady sang for her and, and, and it cut to them. And the one shots and the photo that broke me, dude. <laughs> the photo. Oh my goodness. The photo broke me. <laughs> oh shit. I, rec I recollected the, the, the scene again. <laughs> no matter how many times I watch that film, I will cry every time. <laughs> oh, Billy's getting more invested. <laughs> Wait. Uh, we got some like tissues on. <laughs> uh, okay. <laughs> you got any tissues on. <laughs> yeah. Hey, uh, hold on. <laughs> it's okay. Do you, do you want a tissue? I'll uh, hand you a virtual tissue. No, no, no. Is there any tissue redeems? No, no. <laughs> Stop. Shut, shut, up. shut up. Shut <laughs> up. <laughs> Make some tissue redeems. <laughs> Ever since um I forgot which film it was. I think it was um I think it, I think it was Marley and Me. I think it was a film. After watching Marley and Me, I think uh I think I can't I think I think I can't uncry from a film anymore. It's uh Aw. That's when you know that I, I'm a big fat um tearjerker 
Yet I love rom coms. I love films like that. So no matter what film I watch, I'll always cry. <laughs> oh. God damn it! Then play Planet of Visual. No, no, I'm not. I am not. <laughs> I am not jumping in that. Fuck off! I already see, well, Fuck off! Uh, uh, it's, also, sadly, I've already seen clips of the of the after the after story on YouTube anyway. So I kind of knew what's up. So I jumped ahead. I mean, apparently. Apparently, the visual novel and the actual anime are totally different. I know. There's many uh, uh, visual novels have multiple endings. What do you mean? I so it may not be real, but that's one of the endings. You know, it's like with the uh, I kind of don't like the multiple endings trope, but it does extend the um, but it does extend the content. So I guess that's fine. But still. Uh, when you mess with the heart, you mess with the heart. You, I will, you will, I will forever hate the person that will mess my heart. <laughs> All right. Oh. And no matter what, <laughs> you play in my heart. You try to come back to me. I say fuck off. I close my door. <laughs> so, goodbye forever. <laughs> See you then. Hi. Are, are are you blowing your nose right now? Yeah. <laughs> ah. You know how good the movie is when. Yeah, I think that's five out of five blows. <laughs> it doesn't blow. It it's good. Come on, man. Anyway, um, that's where everything is now, and um, I'll never mm -hmm. ever forget that the film that it it's it's one of the films that's popped off the. It's one of the films that has popped off to me in the, in the entire year of twenty twenty two. I know this year technically mm -hmm. came out last year. But it's in the anime awards for this year, so in a way, uh, we're getting it's the year. We get we're gonna get it. <laughs> it's it's it pops up this year. We're good. Um, yeah. Yeah. Um. So, okay. From you, from you two, for only one timers here. What? Give yourselves a rating and why. I like. I'm curious. Um. Ooh, either from Rotten Tomatoes or from. Just I think he goes first. <laughs> <laughs> okay, out of ten or out of five stars, like oh, and and why? Like, give it. Summarize it the best you can. Um, I'd say like uh, a hard <laughs> nine point five out of ten. Hey, I thought you wanted Nikki first. Come on. <laughs> Never mind. Oh, darn it. Oh, God damn it. No, no, no. He said it first. All right, so fine. Okay, go ahead. Oh, all right. So, all right, go ahead, Rich. Okay, so, um, reason being, like, I initially thought it was a 10 because it just had a little bit of everything. But there was, like, um, a little, uh, the reason for, for the docking of the 0.5, just in the middle, it felt like, mm -hmm. um, like carrying the story was a bit lost and confused, right? So mm, I like okay. how they did a shout out to the original Disney Beauty and the Beast and the dancing scene, right? So, yeah, but bit. of course it kind of like, yeah, but of course it kind of like, um, unfortunately it kind of framed my mind to expect Disney Beauty and the Beast. So when they changed the plot of the story a little bit, because mm -hmm. ultimately uh, Disney Beauty and the Beast is about uh, love and romance, mm -hmm. right? versus uh bell uh, anime beauty and the beast is uh love uh so much that uh your kindness uh outgrows your heart right because mm, um that's you good, know the main character is like why did my mom have to die and whatnot oh, so yeah and the reason being is that like mm. her mom was so kind to save another person yeah. and the fact that nice uh, she realized that herself right mm -hmm. So, yeah, that's but, a big yeah the reason for the 0.5 is that it just, uh, because of that framing, I was expecting more romance. So when it got <laughs> to the end, it was like, oh, man, but it, it tricked me, though. It, it tricked did, me because it it's like, oh, man, you, she's going to like her childhood friend. Right. It's right and there. when he's he says, right it's like, right there, oh, you're, you're bell, aren't you? Right. But we technically <laughs> got, hey, hey, we technically got a little romance part. Uh, re remember, Kamishi. Yeah, Kamishi oh. popped off. Remember? <laughs> Kamishi and Ruka. 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 Great. Round of applause to them. <laughs> and if you think about it, like Megarina Luca and like Ruka, I'm right, like, is that a play right, on words right, or is that right, intentional? Right, you know? Go ahead. <laughs> I'm kidding. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. He, he mentioned he. It's all, it's all good. So yeah, but the the, the uh, point five was like because my um mm, your expectations like, uh, it was so good. My sister ended up watching it right, uh... and uh, she pointed out. I was like. 
Why do you think adults just leave, let her go on her own, right? So, oh yeah, that's a that's like, that's they had to explain it in the movie, right? I'm like, why well, weren't you paying a, attention? But she mm-hmm. raises a good point, you know. Yeah, that, yeah, it's, but that's a thing, right? That's another foreshadowing thing. Adults can't do shit. <laughs> you you have to be your own adult to like solve the problem right away, no matter what. And that's what I think. That's the kind of a yeah. secret message there as well for the real deal. Yeah, I thought it. I thought it was more as if the adults went with them or with her, right? Mm-hmm. So uh, it would devalue uh, her coming to uh, the kids' rescue, right? Yeah. So there would be that loss of trust. Yeah, that, that it, it, it does come down to that, eh? Let me try to, like, put up something here. Uh... Oops, wrong one. Okay, anyway, uh, forget it. Um, yeah, what about you, Hibiki? Well, what I think about the movie? Yeah, out of, uh, out of ten, I guess, or like uh, uh, any thoughts on uh, what's your biggest, like like what Rich is saying, like any, why do you think it deserves this rating out of ten, or like this percentage in Rotten Tomatoes or something? <laughs> Honestly, I give it a nine out of ten. Ooh, yeah. Why is that? There you go. Well, hmm, what should I say? Like the story behind the movie and the message was like very good. Mm-hmm. Like how he's how he's stuck to the original Beauty and the Beast theme while keeping it like more modern, I guess. Mm-hmm. So it got the message across, and the story was well played. But I feel like something was slightly missing in a sense. Mm, yeah. Like it left it, it, it ended well he, for Tali, uh she she's muted. I'll say it for her. It ended up with a lot of questions for a lot of us watching the film. Yeah, it did. Yeah. So Like end mm-hmm. like the ending was great, but it it kinda lacked the impact. Ah yeah. Well uh, yeah, it just yeah. it just ended with like just you know, oh they just made they've managed to find the beast or like they managed to solve the issue. They live heavily ever after. That kind of shit. It's a very somber that, impact. That, yeah. Like, the whole intro and the mid-scene, like, had a really good storytelling and really played, like, very intricate. Intricate. Mm. Yeah, it's... Uh... As, as, the, as towards the ending, like, it's just like, oh, we just kind of ran out of the ideas. So it's just like... <laughs> Make it like a happily ever after, like a Disney yeah. story. Like just call it a day. Yeah, you're right on that. I think it did leave a lot of questions, and that and the studio was like, "Well, I think that's it." <laughs> Anyone else was like, "Yeah, I think we're good." Yeah, yeah, yeah. I just left it up at that. <laughs> yeah, I got that just too. I'll be honest with you, but um, I can't. Oh, he's gone. <laughs> he left. Cool. Well, <laughs> well, um, but. Hmm. Yeah, it, it did came to that, didn't it? <laughs> so yeah, not nothing much, nothing else to say. Eh? Just um, it's a somber ending. Uh, it's, it's yeah. not a somber ending, like a somber impact. Great ending, I'd say. It, yeah, like if I were to like rate it like each part individually, like I give it a, mm-hmm. I give it an eight for eight out of ten for the story, ten out of ten for the music. Mm. I see. The music, yeah. Yeah, the music. I say vis- I- music is like very well done. Yeah. <laughs> like it, it really made an impact on the whole scene. I- like, mm-hmm. like ho- even the whole, like the story itself was like very saddening and heartwarming. Mm-hmm. But, ha- but adding that kind of music on top of that. Yeah. Like, it really amplifies it. Yeah. Like listening to the OSTs. <laughs> Yeah, listen to OST. Um, it you you really it they really like on they really like went down in detail like how to play this and that the orchestra and all the orchestra does this and like 
set yeah. the scene up like like the fucking like the the freaking rts war between like the ladies Go, went all out like fucking like D- dynasty warrior shit and i'm here like that yeah. did not have to go that far but you know what you're right that's technically that's technically how war started in the realm of like jealous girl for, jealous girls on the internet for fuck's sake anyway yeah yeah but I feel like the the music definitely carried the movie, even in that tactical yeah. scene, right? It just like it set the mood. <laughs> the ta- like, oh man, oh, ta- you mean ta- you mean you meant the the looking for the castle oh, part? Yes. <laughs> Oh, the, and all the scenes, oh, all scenes, right? Okay, okay. So, so yeah, so yeah, for the mother scene, of course, uh, the mother like uh, back backstory, the oh god, I recall the dragon first time were in the concert, that uh, that uh yeah. the fluttering of the of the of the violins, oh my god, I was like oh whoa, <laughs> really set even, up the battle right there. Shit, man. Yeah, even the lack of music, like the lack of music during the parts of like you, you know nature? where um you know um like for example when uh the childhood best friend like uh when she runs towards the river and the childhood uh, best friend grabs her hand. Yeah, like the they set up the scene where the music dissipates, but it's like like the kind of a terrifying moment where like the rushing river and like trying to rescue the kid and then yeah, there's no music, but like yeah. the the atmosphere like resonates. And seeing how like uh, Atoli has seen it in IMAX of all types of audio, like my God, it must have been like surreal being there. Like lucky, <laughs> she's seen IMAX. I'm here sitting in Canada, be like, like where's my IMAX? Where's my IMAX? Where's my poster? Where's my poster? What the fuck? I'm pissed off. <laughs> if you can't go all out, like why as well just shorten it or never come at all? Come on, man. Anyway. <laughs> I guess they tried, but <laughs> still, I'm, I'm actually I was actually waiting for the poster. Like like, where's the poster? Where's the poster? Where's my where's my freebie? Because like, they did it for Machia, did it for Machia, did it for Fate Stay Night. Like why can't it be for Bell? Jenkins, come on! Well, they did it for the U.S. But Maybe now, you asked the movie theater. For, they, yeah, I did. No one, no one knows. I'm like, fuck. Just, Have a friend that works at the movie theater? No, no, no. Okay, it, it's, it's not in Canada. It only happened in the in the U.S. Apparently. Oh, rip. Yeah. I would have wanted him. Oh, yeah. Well, I know. Well, maybe well, maybe well, check your local convention. Maybe they handed out uh, we'll, we'll local see. movie well, posters. Well, I doubt that. Like, I, doubt. I, I know with our local convention, right, they had uh, movie like uh, posters of your name that wasn't uh, easily available, oh, right? Wow. So I had I was left over with a whole bunch from Ooh. corporate relations. I'm wow. Like, oh, bonus. <laughs> so. Actually, if you find anything, you can give it to me for Bell. Thanks. Anyway. Um, okay. At the, no sa- at the same time, I think I'll just. Uh, I'll, I'll probably be satisfied with a wall scroll to buy from their or from their shop later down the road if they sell merch for now uh, and while they buy looks anyway um, humble right because all, all, all that matters though is like how the music uh, how the movie is portrayed to us because to me the the to me the theme is 10 out of 10 for sure music's 10 out of 10 story may be better yeah you're right eight um, the animation I'd say is 9.5 I'd say. Um, uh, oh, sorry, I should say, I should say 10, but, you know, uh, it's just, it's Studio Chizu. You could probably watch a lot of, a lot of good films beforehand that had under, had abuse, so, I shouldn't say abuse, but used so much of their animation that extended to the way, like, The Girl Who Left Through Time, that's another studio that relate that, the same studio made, uh, the girl who left through time. That's another great film. In fact, the logo of Studio Chizu is literally uh, the same. is is a reconnaissance is a recollection of the girl who left through time. It's great. So, but overall, I think um, it will. It it is a film that had that everyone needs to watch. Um, no matter no matter what kind of uh, <laughs> no matter no matter what kind of taste you have. It's it's probably good for the first time, maybe not for a second time, unless you're into it. Uh, which again, you could just own the Blu-ray and just watch it over and over if you like. Um, there will definitely be a lot of people in my life currently that I want to watch, specifically the one that made a cover for you. <laughs> she hasn't seen the film, she's seen the song, and I'm like, ah, that's good enough. <laughs> but it will be something I hope she will watch. Uh, a lot of a lot of uh, virtual character virtual characters in the, in my life that I want to want them to watch as well. Uh, it's gonna be a it's gonna be a film that 
will forever be in my mind until uh, until another film will take over that. So that's about it, honestly. Um, <laughs> we'll keep it short because Atali's not here. Um, I'm not gonna. Uh, what? Let's see what she has to say. Unless she's too busy to talk at the moment. Yeah, unfortunate. But um, yeah, I, I I got nothing else. But we're um so. It's, it's, it's been two hours. It's been dragging for too long. Well, I'll, I'll keep it subtle. Um, so watch a sub. <laughs> as much as I watch it dubbed many t just many times as sub, I think... Um, although, I will say, if you're not that type of person that will watch, uh, Japanese, uh, watch the Japanese dub and read the, read the subtitles, you will and will experience the same way in Japanese uh, subtitles. In English uh, version, anyway. So watch both, I'd say. But for anime fans out there, well, do watch it sub. I'll keep it. I'll keep it straightforward. But um, for you, for for dub enthusiasts out there, you will enjoy. You will enjoy Bell as it's been translated beautifully, especially the music. You will spoil yourself to the bone. Listen to it for a long, long time. I listened to it over and over again. It took me three weeks to get over to the music and just let it play in the background. In fact, I'm, I'm playing this piano cover and I'm, and it's kind of it's it's like a it's like an old friend coming back at that point. But still, like it it will be uh it will be a music that will stay stick to your mind until for a while until you're over it you know it's yeah. it's uh i, I don't think I, to, right now i don't think any any other movie tops that uh, i have yet to watch other mom or Hosoda films and i'll let, tell and i'll explain another episode of who what's a better film <laughs> that's about that's about it for me that's about it from this episode i hope uh, unless any of you guys have anything else to say tonight the music's so good, I'm drawing a blank. Like, um, I can't think of anything that matches up. Because usually it's like, oh, that music's really good. Like, the only thing would be Pocahontas, but, like, that's old. Whoa. So, and, like, this is, this is like, um, really, like, relative to, like, VTubers and uh, people who have thoughts of the uh, metaverse. It's, like, it's incredible. It's, it has a lot of foresight. And I think it really raises a good point in regards to how we should approach our ourselves in regards to our virtual environments or online mm -hmm. communities right so because like how uh, people can trash talk or how uh, you can grow out of that uh, through sheer kindness right and being benevolent being uh, courteous being understanding right so just mm -hmm. you know putting uh, people first before your own like because the the insane uh, relativity of uh, being unveiled, uh, basically showing your linking your online identity to your real self is a very dangerous act to do, even in today's life, where basically social media is trying to convince you, such as Facebook, is to share, 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 and uh, limit your um, basically open up your privacy mm -hmm. uh, in regards to them po pocketing or uh, increasing their financial coffers, right? Mm -hmm. So, but at that point, right, you're really leaving yourself to be exposed. And uh, I think that uh, being exposed, that vulnerability really makes it for Bell, yeah. right? In exchange for kindness, that danger for kindness. And that's, and that's honestly a beautiful take. Well done, Rich, wow. Like, I don't even, I guess I was put, <laughs> a side, kind of a side note for myself, like, I, I think I put myself in the shoes of the beast that I didn't, I forgot about the kindness part from Suzu and Bill. That kind of overshadowed a lot anyway, that I kind of just appreciated <laughs> anyway. So that's nice to hear from your, from what you said there. Uh, so, <laughs> kindness, uh, uh, yeah, just be fucking kind to each other. That's all, I, that's all we ask. <laughs> That's all. That it's it's honestly simple as fuck. The more you think about it, like yeah, like, yes. there's so many online beasts out there. But imagine if we were just kind to them, we'd have a lot less, you know, in the VTuber world, antis out there. You know, yeah, so. and I'll be I'll, I'll be honest with you, you're probably right on that. Like antis probably, antis probably make up a lot of beasts that was misunderstood. That's all it is. It's it's, it's a that's a that's a that's a big like take on honestly. Uh, but deep uh lore. <laughs> very deep lore very, very deep lore coming in from v night podcast <laughs> anyway um 
unless everyone else has anything to say, that kind of wraps up tonight's episode. Um, please check out everyone featured tonight through these links in chat. I'll go ahead and type it. Uh, go ahead with that. Um, uh, so, um, or down in the description below if you're watching from the VOD. Um, if by chance you're watching the VOD, leave a follow on our Twitch. Please leave a like and subscribe to our YouTube if you really like what you see. Uh, <laughs> yeah, you're good. <laughs> Anything else from our fellow movie lovers tonight? Mm, nope. No? <laughs> Not that I know of. Not that you know of. We're good, Reg. You're good? Okay. Well, I guess that's about it. Thank you guys again for uh, sticking around, and uh, I can finally, finally close the door, close my door, on Bell. <laughs> that sounds so sad. Um, finally close on it, uh, close on this, and um, maybe. And while I wait for the Blu-rays to come out, I will enjoy my time online once more with with friends, of, with some friends of mine, and hopefully you you guys very soon for more podcasts or for just a simple collab in general. How about that? <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, that's about it. Thank you all for tuning in tonight. And we'll see you guys next time. Bye. Yeah. Stay determined, y'all. I literally, I literally made like, uh, I literally made like a script for myself uh, for that part. So you didn't have to do that. <laughs>